YouTube just told me it couldn't create the stream, but I appear to be live on the internet. I hope. I don't fucking know. Hi. How are you? Welcome to the stream on YouTube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. That is me. I'm Johnny Chiodini. I'm surrounded by govins, which can only mean one thing. It's painting stream time. Ah, oh, bad news. It didn't work. You're not live. Okay. Well, I'll stream to nobody. Um, hi. How are we doing? It's the first painting stream of the year. And today we're painting awesome, very teeny tiny goblins. Very teeny tiny goblins. So that'd be nice. I think I'm in a bit of a weird mood. I had an accidental nap. And it... I'm still not fully awake from it. Because I had a meeting. That was good. I had some lunch. And then I sort of lay down for a minute and then, whoops, I fell asleep. Anyway, painting. Here we go. Here's the painting. Cam ram ram ra. Um, I mean, I've already told you. But I'm, t I'm painting all oh, little tiny goblins. Such little tiny goblins. Goblins? Gnomes. That's the fucking word I'm looking for. Gnomes. I'm painting little tiny gnomes. Uh, I'm getting confused with goblins, and I'll tell you for why very shortly. Uh, Will says, this happens to me if I get in a car after having a meal, fast asleep. I hope you don't have to drive too often there, Will. Um, this is a little tiny gnome. It's so tiny. These are made by Warp Miniatures, who I genuinely think um, is, is making some of the best uh, 3D printable uh, miniatures out there at the minute. Um, so, um, basically... You'll remember, hopefully, I i mean, I play a lot of Blood Bowl, that much you, you all know, uh, but I was working on a team of orcs that looked like humans. I was going to play for this season, this upcoming season of the Blood Bowl League I'm in. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, and I spent over a year kit bashing them and painting them, and I finally finished them, and I realised I'm sick of looking at them. I'm so sick of looking at them. Like, I found a... I opened a box the other day. I was like, what's in here? And I was like, oh, it's you. Because it was my Imperial knobs. So, um, I've changed my mind. I'm going to put them on the shelf for a whole year. I'm not going to play them this, this season. Uh, and I've decided instead I'm going to play Snotlings. Snotlings are the worst team in Blood Bowl. Like, according to all of the data and all of the opinions. Uh, so... I'm playing snotlings, snotlings, which are teeny tiny little goblins, but I'm doing them as teeny tiny little gnomes, which is uh, why I'm painting teeny tiny little gnomes. But it's not just teeny tiny gnomes, because they're allowed trained trolls, so I'm going to start working on these in a bit. Uh, this is uh, this is Mr. Bins. He's a giant badger. This is his wife, Mrs. Bins. So they're going to be a part of the team. Here they are. I've not finished painting them yet. Um... I've got a couple of couple of snotlings, a couple of gnomes on frogs. So we're going to be painting those. Um, and they also have these, which are called pump wagons, which are just illegal battle cars. So I'm going to be, I've got some, some good stuff to, uh, to paint today. Please add mushrooms to them. Look, Haywire, look, around the, the neck of Mr. Bins and Mrs. Bins, there are mushrooms already. So there's going to be mushrooms. Um, so there we go. Cheerful Spiders on a super chat saying, A stream to nobody. I can't believe you're supporting Cyclops violence this way. Happy Monday. That is a top 10 pun. I really like that a lot. Uh, here's a gnome on top of a, a pole that's drawing some little trousers. Woof, what a world. What a world we live in. So anyway, yeah. Today, slinging paint on those things. Uh, as you can see, I've done some of them already. Here's my favourite one. It's a little guy swinging around a plant pot. Um, they're in green and red which are the colours of Hockland, which is a province in the old world uh, of Warhammer's uh, empire. So these are the Hockland red caps, because they've got red hats. It's all very good fun. Um, and that's what I'm painting today. So what will we start with? What will we start with? Um, I'm kind of in the middle of working on Mr. and Mrs. Bins. But I could, I could bench them for a little bit. I'll come back to Mr. and Mrs. Bins, shall I? Yeah. Should we work on the pump wagons? Let's work on the pump wagons, because some of this is just slapping down wood colour on, uh, 
on a wagon. As you can see in the middle here, there's a couple of gnomes in the drum on each side, kind of running in that Fred, Fred Flintstone kind of way to drive it forward. So there's actually a lot of uh, a lot of gnomes on this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are nine gnomes on this fucking pump wagon alone. Um, there are fewer on this one, but look, this one has got little little wings that are leaves. All very good fun. Uh, Will said, wait, did you pick Hockland because that's where there are old, there are gnomes in the old world? No, I didn't. Is is that true? I know that it's famous for the Hockland long rifles, uh, but I just like the I just like the word Hockland. I thought Hockland Redcaps had a good sound to it, rather than Austin. Oh, that is where they're from. Oh, amazing. Oh, fantastic. Right. <clears throat> Ultimate Funk says, my Imperial Noble team, Stirl and Albion, are almost sarcastically unsuccessful. They are. I think they're a tricky team to pilot, if you ask me. It's the one place that the old world had gnomes in, like, one Warhammer fancy role-playing adventure. Huh, what do you know? Well, well, well. Okie dokie. Right. Excuse me, I don't know why I'm a bit sniffly, but uh, I am. Anyway, how are you all doing, now that I've given you a lengthy explanation as to what I'm daubing paint on today? Did I leave that open? Yes, I did. Great. Oh, no, how much has that dried out? Not much. It's okay. Good, good, good. How are we all doing? Are we having a nice day? It's Monday, which is um, historically people don't like. Carry choices. Oh, uh, okay, so far, still waking up. All right. The chief deity of the Gnomish Pantheon is Ringley, god of smiths and jesters. I, jesters. I knew about, uh, I think I'd heard of Ringley. Hey, Wire says, I'm sleepy, should try and paint space elves, but not really feeling it today, so I'm just going to vibe. Good for you. I think an important part of the hobby is knowing when you don't want to do it and not forcing yourself. Oh, it's MLK Day in the States. I didn't realise. A happy MLK Day to all. Right. Yeah, I'm just going to start by slapping down some, some uh, brown on uh, the, the pump wagons, and then we'll start um, doing the base colours on the gnomes, starting with the ones in the drum, because that's going to get messy. But, uh, yeah, 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 all right, cool, cool, cool. God, it feels like an absolute age since I've painted on camera. <sighs> ah, yeah, which means I can watch live. I understand, right, okay. Verolvan says, I've been very tired for a week. Preach. If that just isn't the human condition these days, I don't know what is. It's um, it's impressive. Like I came back to work after the break and was like, wow, I've got so much energy again. Oh, rest is amazing, it turns out. I'm very quickly tired again. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? Will says, don't paint on camera, you won't be able to use it for filming paint on model. Very, very strong. Your observational humour is strong as ever. Will. Will says, okay, right, is it just me or is everyone extremely, extremely drained and exhausted feeling of late? No, that tracks. It feels like everyone is, is absolutely running on fumes and has been for about six months. Um, I think a big part of that is just due to the, the ongoing existential crisis of having to pretend everything is normal when everything really isn't on a global scale, which is just... It's difficult, isn't it? Having to pretend like you don't want to go out and scream at people in the street, like how, how, what the fuck is going on? Um, which is, it definitely takes, it takes energy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Josh Warriad has done a super chat saying, ahoy there, have had a bit of cash. No, sorry. Ahoy there, have a bit of cash and positivity comma. No, semicolon. Contrary to a typical Monday, today was absolutely fabulous. Act. I need to read this again. 
Ahoy there, have a bit of cash and positivity. Contrary to a typical Monday, today was actually fabulous. First day back at lectures and it was truly delightful. Best discussions I've had in a while. Well, that's fantastic, Josh. Thank you very much for the cash and positivity, especially off the back of me going, is, is, it, is it me and Will or is everything dreadful? Uh, I am glad that you had a, a nice and stimulating time at lectures. Um, it's good when that happens. I can still remember some of the most sort of stimulating days I had at uni. There was one time where I used to be in a, was it a, th it was a three hour lecture seminar. So we'd sort of roll it all into one. So it was kind of, it was part lecture and then part enormous seminar, et cetera, et cetera. But it was quite draining. So we used to have a break, obviously, halfway through. And I remember one time, this is in third year. Uh, so we're sort of getting towards the end of the degree. Um, my course mate, Victoria and I, and we never really got on. We didn't really see eye to eye. I found her pompous. She found me pompous. Uh, we both hated each other's ideas. We both stuck it out. In the break, we were like, you're not going anywhere and neither am I. So we could continue to argue about uh, medieval romance um, as a literary form. And I remember the lecturers sort of sitting back, looking bemused that we'd not gone anywhere, but also kind of proud that we were so fired up that we were like, I'm not pissing. I'm not getting a cup of fucking tea. I'm going to sit here and yell at you, Victoria, because you're wrong about the chivalric code. She was wrong. At the end of uni, I remember it was like, I'm not going to miss you. I don't like you and you don't like me, but I will miss arguing with you, which was nice. Yeah, I'm not pissing. Quite of the, quite of the stream so far, and it's only been 13 minutes. Mm -hmm. Matthew1985 says, also tired, although it is 2.15am in Queensland. Yeah, that'll do it. I'm going to Queensland. I know full well that's not what that song is. But uh... yeah, there we go. Oh, I don't have any music in my ears. That's why I'm feeling weird. Being left alone with my internal and external monologue, which is not a nice way to be. I know Spotify Wrapped is just a bunch of marketing hooey to make other people want to join Spotify. Because it gives you these crazy insights, being like, you listened to this song a lot this year. Um, but it was illuminating to see how much, how many minutes I listened to versus other people. Um, it turns out I listen to music a hell of a lot. And at, what, at one point I was like, what is wrong with everyone else? Why aren't they listening to more music? And it was like, oh, no, wait. I walk the dog for two hours every day and I hate being alone with my thoughts. That's why I listen to a lot of music. Got it. Freya says, OK, now I need to hear your opinion on chivalric romance, pretty please. The chivalric code is a bunch of fucking bullshit. They're all selfish as hell. There's no such thing as chivalry. Like, of sh as chivalry. It's all self-serving. They're all hypocrites. And the fucking Carl of Carlisle is the only one who's ever actually shown them what it is to be decent. And he shames the shit out of them. Because you know what they are? Fucking classists. Boom. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my lecture. <laughs> Naka says, as a postman, seeing my audible listening figures was truly eye-opening and terrifying. I can, yeah, I can fully imagine. Nice, which says, more like shittlery, am I right? <laughs> Very good. I completely threw my um, my Spotify wrapped out of whack because there was a three-week period where I was incredibly depressed and just listened to one EP on, on loop. Um, so it, it's like, you really love this band. I'm like, no, 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 no. For two weeks, I could do nothing but listen to four songs. Anyway... Um, I'm going to mute my mic for a sec so I need to blow my nose. Hold on. Then, uh, blew my nose. Right. I think we should just start trying to base paint, base coat all of these fucking gnomes. That's what we should do. Yeah, let's just go for it. We'll do one pump wagon at a time, but it's been good to base coat that one. Oh yeah, I was going to put music on.
You can tell my brain's not really with it right now. And I need to take my jumper off because I'm too warm. I feel like a child who's just not settling. New album. Go. All right. Cheerful Spider has done a super chat saying, Chat, I heard Johnny rode in a cart once. Hmm. Hmm. Is that a reference to Lancelot, the Knight of the Cart? Or is there a pun there I'm not getting? I don't know, but I'm suspicious. Okie dokie. Let's get to it. That's better. There we go. We're listening to a bit of music. I need to adjust the angle of the camera so you can actually see what I'm painting. Focus isn't terrible. Let's paint some fucking dwarves. Gnomes! Really struggling to see where the actual face is on this guy, which tells me that it's not massively important, but it's nice to at least show willing. Thomas Ford says, Hey Skelly Pals had a novel, this is a uh, super chat by the way. Hey Skelly Pals had a novel manuscript rejected this morning, so feeling a little down, but here for the hobby stream. Anyway, shameless plug, LL Ford on Substack if you like sci fi fantasy stories. Um, firstly, Thomas, thank you very much for the super chat, that's very, very generous of you. And secondly, you've written a novel. That's fucking badass, and that's something nobody can ever, ever take away from you. Um, don't let the rejection get to you, because um, that is just, it's just one place going, this isn't quite for us, uh, for whatever reason. It is not a reflection on your personal worth or your diligence, because what you've done takes a hell of a lot of it. You sat down and wrote a novel, or maybe you even did it standing up, who knows? You've written a novel that is worthy of our uh, respect and our congratulations. So yeah, LL Ford and Substack, if you like sci-fi fantasy stories. Josh Warriad says, writing a long piece of literature, what a novel idea. Josh Warriad perpetual problem on this channel. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're all right, Josh. Oh! Oh, dear. Well, at some point your weapon broke off, didn't it, Gnome? You've got nothing in your hand, which is fine. Just looks like you're shaking your fist. That's fine. Ah, stop the clock. 19 minutes in. It's nice to be painting, isn't it? Painting's nice. I say it every single time I stream myself painting. Painting's nice. I like doing it. Painting good. I'm especially excited to be running this team because they're going to be god-awful and I'm going to have a great time losing all season long. Because last season... I was on top of the league table for a lot of it, and then I came second in the league table, and the hope was awful. I started to believe that maybe I could win it, and it made me feel really scared and nervous and sick, and then I crashed out in the quarterfinals and felt a bit sad about it. So spending a year just going, ha-ha, I'm going to drive a tiny car at your men now, sounds like bliss, frankly. Oh, Hermit Prime says it's the hope that kills you. That's the thing. It is the hope that kills you. 
Running doors for the first two seasons of the league was delightful. Ah, at times it was heartbreaking. But uh, I was under no illusions about how far I was going to go. And actually I ended up being in the semi-finals twice because I didn't expect anything. <sighs> And the good news is, our league has a trophy for the most number of deaths suffered in the team over the course of a season. And I'm a shoe in for that one with Snotlings. Because they have very low armour. So that'll be nice. This has been a really nice project to pick up, because the thing about painting tiny things is... It all goes quite quickly. Um, and... Little things make a huge, huge difference. So they're just really satisfying to paint. They You get them done quite quick. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've just painted the skin on nine nine models on the same base. But yeah, that, bang, there we go, that's done. Like, it's just, it rattles along really quick and it's uh, very rewarding. Which is good, because after I painted this team, I need to paint a whole other team for somebody who's joining the league, so... Lots to do. And then I, I haven't even cracked into Legion Imperialis, which is a whole box game that I bought that I haven't touched yet. Anyway. It is the Sean Bean Big Bag of Cans Award. Thank you, Edward Suter. Suter? Sutter. It did not get retired due to certain comments. Oh, don't tell me Sean Bean said some fucking dreadful stuff. I don't want to have to make two new trophies. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Why can't people just be fucking chill? You know? Ooh, Ultimate Funk says, after my first actual 40k tournament uh, for 15 years in February, I would be lying if I said there was any hope of me winning, but two days losing in a fun way, I can do that. That sounds great. Haywire says, dare I ask which legion, legion, brackets I'm assuming traitors. You're correct, I'm going to do Death Guard, Haywire, but why did you assume traitors? I am curious. I mean, you bang on, but has me wondering. Uh, I'm doing them because I... Blood Bowl's made me very fond of Nurgle as an idea. I just think he's a jolly fun chap. Uh, and also just because I love the paint scheme. Hmm. Hey, why you appear to be sweating? <laughs> What's that about? Oh, uh, that, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Right. I don't have to do loads to these ones in here, but... Will says, we are the Unbroken Blades, we are the Death Guard, by our hand shall justice be delivered, and doom shall stalk a thousand worlds. Guess what heresy army I've just finished? <laughs> Is it the Imperial Fists? Little tiny gnomes, wearing green and wearing red. Little tiny beards and little hats upon their heads. Yeah, that gives a suggestion of little goobers running around, doesn't it? Fists are an army I'm going to do one day. I like uh, the Imperial Fists a lot. I mean, I don't know if I'm ever going to collect an actual proper army again. Because I've, I've just, I know now, full fact, for, for a fact rather, that Full-scale army games are not my jam. Turn at 28 aside. I just don't have it in me anymore. Wraith Fines has done a super chat saying, Hello, Johnny. It is absolutely frigid today. The temperature here is minus 12 Fahrenheit. Bloody hell. So I'm staying in bed under a big fluffy blanket surrounded by two kitties. That sounds very wise. It is cold in London as well today. Uh, I walked the dog this morning around half ten. Everything was all frosty. It was lovely. Watson was in a little thermal coat running around. Um, 
looking like a, a small blue potato on legs. But uh, yeah, it was it was cold. Um, James Malcolmson says, sweating after you mentioned Nurgle just means he heard you. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat and an excellent quip. Bloody lovely. I just think Nurgle's really funny, like, as a concept. I just think it's great. Like, oh, the Empire's a bit stolid. We need something better. We need the forces of chaos to wake us up from this eternal servitude. I know. How about this one? He'll make us all sick and bless us with mutations. That sounds nice. Mint. Davy Jones has done a super sticker. The super sticker uh, is of a pair... Uh, wearing a pair of sunglasses. The pair, I should mention, has arms and legs and a face and appears to be sentient, which um, you might find disturbing, but uh, honestly, around here it's quite commonplace. Anyway, he keeps turning around, pulling his sunglasses down, and some text says, Hey, you! As if to say, Hey, you! Hey, yourself, Davy Jones. That sounded rude. Hello, Davy Jones. Thank you very much for the super sticker. Uh, it is good to see you. We're going to need photos of Watson in a coat, says Cameron. All right. Hang on. There you go. That's her in her little coat. Like a little blue potato on legs. I think I've got a better picture. Hang on. She's very sweet and I love her. She doesn't like wearing clothes, generally. She really doesn't like wearing her coat, actually. There you go. I love painting tiny things. It just, it just ticks along at such a lovely pace. It also gives me the confidence to just stick things down rather than blue tacking them on so that I can paint all the bits. It's like, nah, these things are tiny, it's fine. Just slap some colour down. You'll be grand. That dad says, you know, things have to be bad if Nurgle is welcomed escapism, lol. Yup. Yup, 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 yup. I'm excited to, to get into um, Legions Imperialis, especially since, as I, as I was just saying, I love painting tiny things, it turns out. And Epic Scale just seems fun. I don't know how much I'm actually going to play the game, but I just want to get my hand on some, hands on some tiny tonks. I probably could have satisfied my uh, desire for the game just by buying one box of... Uh, tiny rhinos but I haven't so there we go Manus Noble says hello any experience with the alien RPG yeah I've played it uh, I played it as part of a sponsored video on Dice Breaker many moons ago now um, uh, it's good fun like the adding up the stats bit can be a bit like clunky but what I love about it is stress dice the idea being that you know the more frantic the situation gets the more stressed your character gets so you get stress dice to add to the pool and these can actually help you succeed if you roll well because like you know you're backed into a corner there's something approaching you you're terrified you've got a gun you manage to nail the shot etc etc you know like people performing well under stress but if you roll badly with those stress dice bad things happen to you because you've been tipped over the edge it's a really nice way of like amping up the action and making making your characters stronger but more susceptible to bad things. I just think it's a really nice mechanic. Um, I find the game itself a little bit difficult in terms of... I was having this conversation with friends uh, recently where like... Like, it's difficult. It's difficult when you're watching a film and you're watching the exact same people... Well, not the exact same people. You're watching people go into the exact same situation you've seen before, and they're like, there's some kind of egg here. What's that do? And I, oh, God, there was a thing on my face. But I think it's dead now, so I think I'm okay. Like, when you have such a deep, like, familiarity with the lore of a thing, it's difficult watching people go through it with complete ignorance, you know? Like, it would be interesting to see an alien film where they, they are aware of the risks and they know everything we know, but still bad things happen. Um, and the problem with the RPG is, like, to an extent, you have to pretend to not know. And it's just a bit like, 
I can find that a little bit. I mean, I'm obviously I'm fine with with uh, dramatic irony and acting things out when my player knows less than I as as a per. Sorry, when my character knows less than I as a player know. Like obviously, to an extent, that's a, a tremendous part of the um, the tension of of role playing. But when it's with a, a uh, with a recognised IP like that, it just I find I can't commit to it, and it pulls me out of the experience a bit. That's just a me problem, really. But it definitely I find it tricky. So there you go. Andy V says, every once in a while you need a chicken to pop out just to throw off the players. Exactly. Like Hey Hey in, um, in Maui. I love that little bastard. Like Andy eating things in that Ox Venture, says Aiden. Doesn't narrow it down, I'm afraid. You're going to have to be more specific. There's only so much Oxventure this creaky, creaky brain can uh, can retain at any one point. Oh, I'm specifically thinking of Andy in the Haunted House Oxventure, deliberately unenthusiastic. Yeah, fair. Yeah, I see what you mean about about tropes and leaning into them. Will. Um, I think it's I think it's solely to do with licensed stuff that I I I can't. I can't hack it. The finger. Necropolis on C. Yeah. There's been so much Oxventure that it's like, there's so much I've completely forgotten. It's weird. Someday, I just need to sit down and try and reabsorb it all. Which makes it sound like I'm going to try and eat a laptop. That's not what I mean. Oh shit, I overpainted a bit there. Well, that was always going to be a problem. It's where the hat touches the wood. I will touch that up later. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Meffy to go says, not the whole laptop, just the drive. I'm not a coward, Meffy. I'm going to eat the whole laptop. I'm going to eat the whole laptop, you know. I wonder what the tastiest bit of a laptop would be. I always find, you know those horrible, instead of like a trackpad, when laptops have those horrible little red nubs between a, between like the the B and the N key that you have to sort of like, steer around. I hate them for controlling a laptop but I think they're probably quite tasty. <laughs> yes Will, the clip mouse. <laughs> or Mr Tom for the Wind calls it a laptop nipple. Hmm. Nice Rich says no. Yeah. I don't know, Clip Mouse's first first album was pretty good, and then after that. Good lord. Cookie Cat 94 says they are not, it's like chewing a pencil eraser. Um Citation needed, please, Cookie Cat 94. Why have you why have you what how do you know what it's like to chew on one of those little nubbin mice from laptops? Please? While I paint this teeny tiny hat. Oh, it's from an XKCD. It's a reference. I am innocent, says Will. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, there you go. Hmm. 
Mancoy says, I can I can confirm it's from an XKCD, but I won't go so far as to say Will is innocent. Fair. Deal. Ah, oh, Table 9 Studio says, I love the vibrant choice of red for these gnome, f gnome friends. Thank you very much. Um, partly because they're gnomes. I just feel like gnomes should have red hats. But also, like, red caps as, like, a... As, like, a, a fey creature, I find fascinating. So, for anyone who doesn't know, red caps are... They're kind of, they're kind of just... Murder gnomes, they are quite gnome-like, and they have red caps, and the red caps are red because they're dipped in blood. Um, and they have to keep killing, because if the blood ever dries out on their red caps, they die. Um, so yeah, they're all about killing things, and they're just mopping up the blood with their hats. So Hawk and Red Caps, as a team name, is partly like, ha ha ha, ooh, look, they've all got red hats, aren't they tiny and silly? And partly like, I'm going to try and kill all my opponents, you know? <laughs> I don't know why I'm so snotty today, so phlegmy. I didn't feel like that earlier on. Maybe it was that, that surprise nap I had. I mean, it's annoying. You know when your throat's just a little bit gummy? It's horrible. G-U-M-M-Y before anyone starts typing. After bloody... I am painting snotlings, in fairness, yeah. Good shout, Will. Bloody love snotlings. Actually, I've never played them, but they seem hilarious, so I think we're going to have fun. Oh. Oh, no, you're fine. Cat M says, right, off to the doctors. Be back, hopefully, before the end. Otherwise, catch you on VOD. Take care, Cat. I hope it all goes very smoothly. And that there isn't a long wait or anything. Cosmic Poet has done a super chat. In fact, Cosmic Poet has done the first ever super chat, uh, which reads, Hello, Johnny and Skelly Pals. Have ye any advice for someone who is looking to start streaming themselves? Um, yeah, I got some advice for ya. Um, OBS is good free software for streaming. That's useful. Um, don't worry too much about, like, Copying other streamers or, like, feeling like there's a certain way you have to do things. Um, because everyone is different. And obviously there are certain... Uh, sort of conventions that a lot of streamers follow. But that doesn't mean that they, ha they have to be yours. Um, because streaming is one of those things... Like anything, if you're excited about it... Great. That'll carry you a long way. If you're not excited about it, it makes it ten times harder to get get in front of the camera. If, if you're even using a camera, you don't have to use a camera. You could just be a, a voice streamer. Um, it, but if you're not excited, it makes it ten times harder to do. So work out what it is that appeals to you most. Is it, you know, would you be playing games? What kind of games would you be playing? Um, uh, and just try and make choices that you're excited about, but also know that you can change it on the fly if you want to. Uh, don't feel like you have to do it a certain way. Even if that's the way you originally set for yourself, you can change your plans in a heartbeat. Um, like on Thursday, I was playing a game and I was like, this game is stressing me out and it's too hard to play and talk over at the same time, so I switched. Um, and that's all right. Um, yeah, do, like, do be aware that Talking and playing a game, it sounds silly, but it is, it, it is harder than just sitting and playing a game with nobody watching. I am palpably worse at playing video games when I'm streaming them than when I am just playing them for fun. And that sounds like a classic bit of like me making excuses for myself, but I'm not. Like, I can be playing something I, I know backwards, like Hard Space Shipbreaker or Halo Infinite or something, and I'm just like, oh my god, I'm playing like trash. Um... Obviously, there are people out there who can uh, are incredible even while they're streaming. But it's all right not to be one of those people. Lean into it, if anything. Uh, but mostly, just find the fun, really. Have a nice time. 
and uh, just give just ban anyone who's giving you shit. And if you're not sure about the vibe someone's giving off, um, because a lot of the time dickheads will come into chat and they'll be like, they'll ask a question that's perfectly normal, like it'll be something like, "Hey, why is your hair so long?" And like, there's nothing wrong with that question, but you'll be able to tell very quickly whether or not they're asking questions in good faith or not, because they often start off asking normal things or inoffensive things as a way of sounding you out so then they can be a problem and you'll develop a sense for it but don't basically if you're not sure about someone or a question fucking ignore it just ignore it just ignore it uh brett moo brett brett mormon uh this is brett's first ever super chat as well hi johnny long time vod viewer this is the first time i've been able to catch a live stream love the channel hope there's more calm stuff in the future yes i need to get back on making calm stuff because it's nice <laughs> and calming um yeah i've not made it in ages uh i will fix that um but yes there certainly will be more in the future thank you very much for the super chat and for being a long time member of vod squad uh it's very nice to have you here during a live It's uh well it's just nice to be doing this to be honest. Full stop. It's a treat. <laughs> I've been not commissioned by somebody, but I've been given a painting project to do for a friend which I should be starting on in the next few weeks. And it's a little bit intimidating, I won't lie to you. It's something I definitely want to get right. Um, and the model itself is about 10 inches tall. So I'm probably going to stream that, because uh, it'll be entertaining. But uh, I can't really say too much about it right now, weirdly enough, but I'm looking forward to doing that. It's nice to have some... Uh, it'll be a fun challenge, I think. It's nice to have some hobby goals for the year. Hobbyists in chat, have you set yourself any goals? I've not set myself too many. Like, I know a lot of people are like, I want to get to X thousand points of Drukhari and blah, blah, blah of this. Um, I'm just going to try and paint more consistently this year. Last year was a bad year for me in terms of painting. I didn't paint anywhere near as much as I wanted to. And what I did paint, I don't know, I painted some of the best stuff I've ever painted last year, but also I painted some stuff I just wasn't that happy with. So it's funny, really. Cameron says, my goal is to finish literally anything. <laughs> oh, Mark Cohen says, how did Gaz's Blood Bowl team go down? Very well. He he really likes him. He gave me a bottle of gin. So, frankly, everyone's a winner. Specifically me and Gav. Um, no, he really liked it, which is nice. Um, I've got to do a vampire team by the 1st of Feb for a friend. But I'm thinking about slap chopping it, because I've never done slap chop before. Uh, and I think it will get it done quite nice and quickly and get them looking to a decent standard so we'll see <laughs> nasty says my pottery buddy and i go my pottery buddy and i are going to try a silly pottery trend a month interesting uh what sort of things nasty have you already picked one or um i wasn't really aware that there are silly pottery trends and i am here for it that sounds fantastic Will says, throw a vase made out of cream cheese. Oh my god. Oh, as in throw one on the wheel. That would be amazing. Could you do could you do that? Scott Perkins says, actually finish painting something and try to introduce more non-GW stuff to friends. Lovely. Oh, scatterbrain weirdy. I'm sorry you've had a bit of a an angsty day. Hello, um, I hope this stream proves soothing for you while well, we talk about hobby stuff while doing hobby stuff. I mean, we'll probably be talking about asses again soon enough. Who knows? But for now, hobbies. Ooh, Table 9 Studio says not paint related, but I've been getting some hints from my friend group. They want to give Tabletop another go. Well, that sounds delightful. Do you have any thoughts as to what you'd do? What game? 
Oh, Sarah Lynch says it's on TikTok, the cream cheese pottery. People are actually doing cream cheese pottery? Why, why, why not? Why not, actually? I, uh, I try not to go on TikTok anymore because it, it absorbs so much of my time. It's so easy to just sit there for hours. Uh, also, hello, Sarah Lynch. It's nice to see you. I love you very much. Nessie says, yes, cream cheese is our first one. Porcelain is often described as feeling like cream cheese, so we're going to try it out. That's amazing. Uh, coriander wolf, <laughs> as in like Cory and a wolf, Coriander wolf, um, has done a super chat saying, caught a live stream after a long time on the VOD squad. Thanks for being a constant here. I'm on a two week mental health leave off work and the company is very much appreciated. The next few weeks will be a good challenge. Um, well, I'm glad that you are taking some leave for your mental health. I'm sorry that uh, things are a little bit rough at the minute. Um, and I suffice to say, I hope they improve very, very soon. Um, but yeah, it's nice to have you around here. Um, uh, I, yeah, um, I mean, I'm back now from the break, so I should be streaming regularly. And um, hopefully we've got a decent year ahead of us in terms of online nonsense. So lots of love to you. I hope, uh, hope you get some rest in and you start feeling generally more positive or just, well, just, you know, you know what I mean? Stable. Well, um, because positivity can often be used as a weird, toxic thing when it comes to talking about mental health. And that's not what I mean. You just need to eat more chia seeds and go for a jog, etc, etc. Um, but lots of love to you is what I'm trying to say. And I hope things start looking up soon. Uh, JT Curtis has done a super chat. A stream on my birthday. Why you shouldn't have. Happy birthday, JT. Certainly makes up for the big uh, for the minus thirty degrees wind chill nature got me. Fucking hell. Hope all is well on your end. Yeah, things are fine on my end. I'm I'm not in danger of losing my nose if I go outside. Minus thirty centigrade. That is intense. Um. Yeah, wrap up warm and a very happy birthday to you. Aiden has done a super sticker of uh, Shiba Inu doing, uh, like, a really, like, like, maniacally big grin and kind of going like, Ugh! which is um, vaguely unsettling, actually. Uh, I mean, it's quite cute when the sticker does it, but I just caught sight of myself on OBS trying to impersonate it and it was a little bit weird. So uh, thank you, Aiden. That was unsettling. I hope we all enjoyed that. Gnomes, gnomes, gnomes. We're painting lots of gnomes. Craig Heath has done a super chat saying, Hi Skelly Pals and Boss, hope you're well. Catching life for once as on strike today in Wales, brackets junior doctor's strike, unwinding with a little Terra Nil ahead of Cardiff demo at the Senedd tomorrow. Thanks for the chill vibes. I almost certainly mispronounced uh, Senedd. Is it Senedd? I mispronounced it. Um, but fucking solidarity with you, Craig. Um... You deserve much better. Junior doctors uh, in general do. Um, so you have my full support and I hope that the demo uh, goes really well. Um, it's preposterous how junior doctors treated. Uh, the healthcare system in this country is a precious thing that ought to be protected, but it has been systematically failed since 2010. Um, deliberately, might I add. Uh, much to the detriment of us all. So thank you very much for standing up and making your voice heard. Uh, it genuinely makes uh, a big difference, and I hope change is coming, needless to say. So, yeah, lots and lots of love to you. Um, oh, no, Christine taught me how to say the name. I've forgotten. Christine Govis robert I think... As a super chat saying, just got back from walking my dog and it got me thinking, does Watson have any weird quirks that amuse you? Mine won't let me take off her leash until my husband sees her in it, like she needs him to know she went outside. Oh, that's lovely. Um, what are Watson's ones? Um, I've been thinking about it recently. Like, with Watson, we have... There are different words we use for when we're moving around, when we're on a walk... And um, when we're playing with a ball that are about seeding control. So like, if we're walking together and we're following, we're following a path or like I, I need her to go a certain way, I go, come on. 
and you know that's if we need to go home or we're rushing or i just i just need her to go a certain way because there's a ditch there or a puddle or whatever i'll say come on and she'll follow me but if i go where are we going it's her it's her time to take the lead and show me where she wants to go so a lot of the time we'll go to the woods i'll be like where are we going where do you want to go and there's no set route we just follow her um and wherever she wants to sniff similarly um if we're playing with a ball if I say out, I want her to spit the ball out because it's time for me to throw it. If I want her, if, but she also likes playing the game where I can't have it. So we've separated it out. So if I want to tell her, I'm telling you I want the ball, but I know you're not going to give it to me. And this is the game we play. I say, can I have it? Because then she's like, no, you can't have it. And I'm like, no, can I have it? You can't have it. So yeah, it's it's just about whether we're dicking around or not, basically. Uh, those are two of them. What else with the pig? She comes to me to wipe her snout after she eats sometimes. I'm sure there's something, but I can't really think. Anyway, she's a good dog. A good pig. Um, mm, 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 mm. all right, a couple more super chats actually. Um, the double D in Seneth is indeed a, a th -th sound. Yeah, you caught me trying to say it, and I didn't. Uh, Edward Souter has done a super chat saying, I accidentally massively derailed our D&D &D game last week by ass assassinating the Admiral of the Navy, brackets, he was 100% a traitor, and now all our characters may die slash become slaves, so have some guilt money. Nothing quite like killing someone and then going, uh oh, what have I done? Um, whoopsie daisy, Edward. Um, still, it's nice to play with some high stakes, like running for your lives, that sort of thing. Uh, I hope you all get away with it. Especially if he was 100% a traitor. Um, L Shepard has done a super chat saying, Hey Johnny, weird question. Still in work mode and have this on in the background. What do you think of escape rooms? Do you think the brackets nerd world has moved on or still something people would go to i think they're still big business if you ask me uh, i actually briefly worked on one uh helping design it um it was just in the very early days of like thematic stuff uh and i was doing research into some of the other games that are out there etc etc but now i've got a friend who makes escape rooms for a living uh for a company and uh yeah they're still big business like the thing is like i think Core nerds may have moved on, but there is a whole escape room community out there, and they are hardcore. Like they are really de like they're not demanding in like uh, uh, they're demanding in a way that they care and they really want things to be good and high. They're not being entitled, but they're demanding because they really want a high level of quality to the experiences. And I think they're really, really dedicated. So no, I think escape, escape rooms are still absolutely enormous business. Really like, it, they may not be like the boom levels they were a little while ago, but I think they're still going. Sarah Lynch says all hail Puzzle Tom as I know him. Puzzle Tom did have a bit of a time recently when, uh, the studio that makes all of their props sent him the unicorn statue complete with light up horn um that he had designed and requested and the horn does look a lot like a cock and balls <laughs> like a lot i don't know why they put a round form on the base of the horn but it it looks it just it full on looks like a dick and balls it's Hilarious. Apparently, in situ in the game, it's not that noticeable and it doesn't look that much like a cock and balls. But on the photos he showed us, good lord, that's a dick and balls. <laughs> nice. It says, I don't know why they put a foreskin on the horn, but there we are. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's absolutely wild. Good times had by all. Especially the model makers, apparently. Mm -hmm. right. After we've done these wood details, it's time to paint all of their beards.
James Malcolmson is on a super chat saying, rounding out the trifecta of questions, which Oxventred would win a series of Taskmaster? Oh, bloody hell. I think it would be close. Um, I think... I think Corazon would try a lot of, of different things that unfortunately di like don't fly. You know, they're like, I've done something really clever there. And then what's his chops goes... Yeah, but I thought it was naff, so you're disqualified. You know, I think I think there would be a lot of like really clever stuff that nonetheless doesn't quite work. Um Is it I wanna say prudence, I'll be honest. I think prudence would come up with a lot of interesting solutions that are just like that good. But also I think she would just at points, just engage with the task and get it done to a decent standard or within a, a, a respectable amount of time. Um, whereas, like, rather than always trying to find the way around it, you know? Um, Alex Simpkin has done a super chat saying, Escape room's a great first date, as you find out the lateral thinking abilities of your date and you can see how your date reacts to stress. Alex, I think if somebody tries to take me to an escape room on a first date... I would, they would not get a second date. That is an incredibly stressful thing. I would be terror. I would be like, absolutely not. Even if we had a great time, even if we smashed the escape room, even if we had a little kiss at the end of the evening, I'd be like, absolutely not. Because I don't know. I don't know when. I don't know when my my dates is going to casually plunge me into a high stress situation again. What if the, what if date two is a combat situation? You know. We'd walk into a pub and I'd be worried that they were going to glass the nearest patron to see how well I do in a brawl. Good lord. Woofed. Ultimate Funk says, only thing worse than an escape room as a first date is taking someone to my mate's improv troupe. <laughs> uh, yeah, terrifying. Terrifying. But then, I don't know, I, I mean, it's been a long time since I've been on a first date, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know what a good first date is these days. I need to blow my nose again. Right. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's see. I was gonna, yeah, we're gonna do the uh, do the beards, aren't we? We're gonna do the beards, and then we just got so go. Yeah, just gotta keep painting the little men. Is what I'm trying to say here. It's coming together nicely enough. Good. Ooh. Uh oh. Where's that paint gone? Is it time? Is it time for our first episode this week of Non-Binary Person Looks Through a Box of Paints for a Specific Paint? I think it might be. Although, it really should be here. From the last painting session I did. That's where that went. Well, at least I, f I found a paint I was missing the other day, but that's not what I need right now. All right. That's fine. Today we're looking for Ghostly Grey by Vallejo. Is it in here? I hope so. Because it's necessary. It's important. And if it's not in here, it's in the... It's in the, um... Living room. And the last time I lost a paint in there, I didn't find it during the stream, and I went slightly loopy. So this doesn't bode well. It's... not here. Well, that's frustrating. Is it under your chair? It isn't, Cameron. I can tell you that with complete confidence. Yeah, no, it's it's just in the other room. Can't be asked to go get it. So I might just do pale sand on these beards. Ugh, I'm going to shade it all anyway. And it's always nice to use pale sand, isn't it? This isn't even the model I was painting. This is the other one. Right. 
Um, here we go. You know it, you love it. It's Vallejo Pale Sand. My favourite paint. Nice, which says, ah, a ruse just to use pale sand. Yeah, you've seen right through me, Sarah. God damn it. Ah. Emma Benton says, oh my God, pale sand. Hello, Emma. I'm glad that there are people out there who share my enthusiasm for pale sand. It really is just a fantastic paint. Not sponsored by Vallejo, but wouldn't mind it. Get in touch, please. Gracias. What makes that your favourite one, says Jules Winkler? Um, I just use it all the time. Um, like It gives good coverage. It's a really nice off-white colour. Um, and I just, after a while, realised I was incorporating it into every single paint scheme I was doing. Without really thinking about it. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to do it with this and this and this. And then, I don't know about the third colour. Oh, cream sounds nice. And I've just realised I was using it for everything. And somewhere along the line, I thought, yeah, you're just fantastic, aren't you? And Pale Sand looked up to me and said, yes, yes, I am. It's just a great paint. Dependable, you know? Always gets around in. That's Pale Sand. There you go, little beard look. Take your Genesis says we should do a challenge stream where Johnny can't use pale sand. Why for Johnny? Why do you want to hurt the Johnny? Why would you take away that which gives me so much joy? I mean, I reckon I could do it, but I wouldn't have fun to sneak back at night to paint pale sand on everything. There you go. There's a little guy. I'll come back and do the uh, the mushrooms in a little while. Alan Smith says Johnny would probably learn how to mix it exactly from other paint. Yeah, it would be a boring stream where I just try and recreate pale sand. That's the problem. I just can't quit you, pale sand. Now, it looks like I fucked up and accidentally painted a bit of the shield there, but that's actually part of that Gnome's moustache flopping over onto the shield, which is nice. Whoopsie. Overpainted that bit. Oh well, I can fix it. I'll be fine. Shit. Now there, I did. Oh, that's actually worked out okay. Fine, 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 fine. <sighs> Crystal McDonald. Hey, Crystal! Crystal McDonald says, are these for Blood Bowl? That's a cute-looking death roller. Uh, yeah, I'm running these as snotlings. Uh, so uh, it's going to be my pump wagon, or one of them. Uh, and I've got... Warp Miniatures does badges for train trolls, so these aren't finished yet, but that's one of my train trolls. Uh, I'm using frogs as, as the hoppers, uh, my stilty runners, oh, for fuck's sake, my stilty runners are just double decker gnomes, um, and I'm really pleased with the fungus flingers. Because they're more like fanatics, but the fungus flingers are these little goobers. Um, yeah, I'm running snotlings in the next season of our Blood Bowl League. And it's a bad idea, but it's also a great idea. Um, hello, it's very nice to see you in chat. I hope you're well. Whoops, there go my glasses. Uh, so yeah, we're just daubing pale sand on all of the beards right now.
Oops, shit. Oh, well. Daktari says, why is a gnome on top of frog detective? It's the... They're hoppers. That's They're meant to be on pogo sticks, but why not frogs? Also, that's you've seen. That's a strong frog. You telling me this frog can't handle the weight of one little gnome on its back? Sarah Lynch says, "How long does a league of blood bowl typically last for?" It depends on the size of the league, um, because the idea is in the regular season, everybody gets a chance to play a game against everyone else in the league. It's not mandatory in our in our league, but we try and let it happen. Um, so our League season starts on the 1st of Feb and we we go into the playoffs on the 1st of November. Um, and then the playoffs are an elimination bracket. Um, so it's the road to the quarterfinals and then, you know, quarters, semis, final. So it, it takes us all year, but it's really lovely. Um, like... We could do it in less time if we wanted to, but it's honestly the highlight of my year every year, so why not make it last for 10 or 11 months of said year? We've got a lot of people right now building their teams and painting them and just start, starting to talk shit. Like, I've done a blog post about this team. Um... Just explaining the uh, just explaining the the law behind it, and why I'm why I'm running snotlings basically just for fun. There's hair on the back of this guy. This isn't my neatest painting. I'm not gonna lie, but hey, these are tiny, so it's fine. Yeah, it'll all come out in the wash. Little painting joke for you there. Alan Smith says, how did those no noble orcs do? Well, I'm not running the noble orcs. I was going to run them this season, and I'm sick of looking at them. Because I spent so long kitbashing them and then painting them. I sat down and just went, I've got no enthusiasm. I've got no desire to play to play these um, this coming season. So I've changed my mind. Instead, I'm playing Snotlings, the worst team in Blood Bowl. I'm going to have a year of absolute chaos, and then I'll play the noble orcs. And it'll all be very nice, I'm sure. And then after that, I don't know. I might redraft the Norse team I I played with last season. I might play something completely new. Chin Chinthor or Kinthor says if one can get sick of looking at the team and they can, how does one ever make it to the field? I just it doesn't normally happen with me in ho hobby projects. Um, it was ju I've spent far too long on that team. I haven't looked at them in weeks. They're hidden in a box. I'm hoping I'll get them get them down off a shelf in in a year's time and go, oh yeah, and I'll be excited again. We'll see. Yeah, Crystal McDowell says, I painted the GW Snotlings team for a commission and I got so fed up, these look so much more fun. I think Warp Miniatures is making like the best, some of the best stuff out there at the minute. Um, these are meant to be like old world proxies, but the pump wagons are just so perfect. I was like, come on. Um, but all of their sculpts are just so wonderful and part of their Patreon. Um, have I got anything else from them on the deck at the minute? No. But they've just made some absolutely gorgeous stuff and it's all really fun to paint. Like, you can see, like, look at the eye socket on that badger. That's a whacking great eyeball. 
they always do really good eyes, so you can always do like a big like boop on your on your minis. I just think they're wonderful. And they did like a whole a whole series of like um, mythical figures from the British Isles with like the Green Knight and a bar guest and. Oh, I think I've got... It's a failed print. But that's a, a Marie Hluid, the um, the Welsh sort of Christmas horse. They just do some... You can see it's got a weird gouge in it because it didn't print pop properly on my printer. But um, yeah, they just do... It's just always lovely sculpts. I think they're great. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, where was I painting? I was painting inside the wagon. There we go. That'll do. Just the suggestion of the colour, I think, is enough, really, with the slot inside here, anyway. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Mr. Tom for the Wind says, if you're cold, he's cold. Let him in. Nice, which says, time for me to go to work. Take care, take care, skellies. Painting's nice, isn't it? It's bloody lovely, Sarah. Lots of love to you. I hope work goes all right. Uh, and I will catch you soon, I'm sure. Uh, where's your beard? Where's your beard? There it is. Fuck. Oh, no, we got there. Bo Furlong has done a super chat saying, Johnny, I just realised that I can run an orc kill team consisting of one knob and 18 grots. They can't be targeted by your stratagems, can't take equipment, and have a six-up save, but you flood the field with useless little guys. You have to, Bo. Come on. Are you seriously allowed to take 18 grots? I didn't really... Like, is there not, like, a model limit in kill team? Because I play Kill Team, and my god, tell me how that list goes, because I will try it. That sounds absolutely hilarious. James Malcolmson says, I really like Rocket Pigs Games miniatures, even if it's a chore to convert them into Tailspire. Rocket Pigs Games. Let's have a look. Alex B has done a super chat saying, Hello, Johnny. For somebody with an interest in miniature painting, but the manual dexterity of a tired old wicker chair, do you have any tips for starting out? Yeah, get comfy. Um, plant your elbows. I like to uh, sort of put my wrists together and also get my little finger and brace it either against the model um, or against, like, my own hand um, just to add some extra bits of stability so like there my wrists are together I'm braced on the model and actually it means that I can make very small movements with the brush um, but also there are lots of choices you can make in terms of your brush size and also the size of your model and the approach you have to painting not everything has to be Super detailed and super up close. I generally speaking have quite a painterly style, which is to say you can see a lot of the brush strokes and up close my work looks quite untidy. It doesn't photograph well, for example, but from a distance I think it looks quite striking and that's what I like. So kind of it's the four foot test where you're seeing it from a table up there. Um oh bloody hell. Some of those Rocket Pig Games minis are lovely and awful. Um, so you could, for example, like, let's go back to that Mary Fluid. Um, this, this model, I really like the sense of movement you have in it, but also look how, like, there's not loads of fine detail, but it's loads of just, like, swooping uh, resin here. So, like, you can do big, bold brush strokes and slowly build them up so that, like, your smallish brush strokes don't have to be that small, you know? Um, and like, I really enjoy painting organic stuff. This is the best thing I painted last year. This is probably the best thing I've ever painted, really. Um, I really like painting skin and layering up flesh and stuff like that. Um, I don't really enjoy painting machinery that much. It's about, like, finding what you want to what you want to paint, what you're excited to paint, and um, just practicing, really. Um, 
I like I didn't do art at GCSE. In fact, my my parents gently discouraged me from doing it because I was bad at it. Uh, and I grew up absolutely convinced I had no 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 proficiency at all in like traditional art forms. So to discover that I enjoyed painting and that it was something I would stick at until like I actually felt like I had some skill in it was a really nice surprise for me. So like a lack of manual dexterity doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do it. Like it, it is it's a skill that you can practice like any other. And just have fun with it, basically. Um, and thank you very much for the super chat. And and for the phrase, dexterity of a tired old wicker chair. That is hilarious. Oh, wow, some of these mini minis are cool. Yeah. Thanks for the uh, heads up about Rocket Pig Games. A brilliant name. But also, um, yeah, some bloody lovely minis, it looks like. <sighs> Cookie Cat 94 says boom arm phone holder and a block of wood. It's a lifesaver for shaky hands. Oh, there you go. Hey. <sighs> Mini Haha Sibyl says when I went to paint my first D&D &D mini, just the one for my character, I found a great geek and sundry article about how to get started painting minis for cheap to see if you like it. Perfect. There you go. Because, like, um, yeah, it, it is one of those hobbies that can get expensive if you just keep keep buying paints and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it can seem prohibitively expensive just to see, just to give it a go and see if you like it. Um, I'm going to tidy up these faces here. It's, yeah, it's um, it's a good one to try before you buy. I'd say that much, if you can manage it. But also, if you do get into the hobby, there are ways to cut, to cut corners and save yourself some money. Like, for example, I don't buy expensive uh, primer cans at all. I, I buy all of my primers from pound shops. And as long as you give them a bath to warm the can up and really shake it well, they're absolutely fine. Because it's like auto paint. And it's like, well, if somebody's going to buy this and spray it on a car, it's probably all right to spray on a tiny bit of plastic, isn't it? That's my way of thinking anyway. Right. These lads are getting getting on for being ready to um to shade, I think. Right, what do I need to do after this? I need to I need to shade this and then layer it up. And just highlight it. Nice. And then obviously do all of the wood bits. Maybe I should do some of that now. Let's do that now. Whoa. I don't have any kitchen towel. That's a problem. I have to buy some and I don't have any. Do I have any like spare or old stuff kicking around? Maybe. That's an old wet palette. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old wet palettes. They work a treat. Great. <sighs> Gentle says, for additional savings, you can monetize videos of you searching through boxes for various types of supplies. Paints, for example. Yeah, monetizing the hobby is definitely a boon. I would say that much. Right. Let's 
So I'm just going to do a pretty heavy dry brush of this lighter brown all over the wagon to try and just pick out some of the detail. So that's another thing Warp Miniatures does really well. It just does really nice, good textured wood. Like, their minis are just a fucking pleasure to paint, I swear. Never had a bad time with one of theirs. Just trying to avoid painting the actual gnomes. You could argue that I would have been better off painting the gnomes separately and then sticking them down. But if there's one thing I'm not, it's a coward. <laughs> it's uh, necessarily sensible. It's probably a better way of putting that. There you go, that's coming out all right. Um, I'm going to do that again in a bit. Or oh, I'll do it with a, bright, a lighter colour. Might even do it with some pale sand. Uh, Crystal McDoll, yes, this is 3D printed. Uh, I picked up a 3D printer just over a year ago now. Um, and I bloody love it. It's... Um, it's less of a faff than I thought it was going to be. Obviously, there are some bits about it that aren't ideal, like it does smell a bit. Um, and I do get, I do find it a bit weird just frequently handling uh, rubbing alcohol that's got re resin in it. Um, but yeah, it's just really useful like to, to run off a whole team like over the course of a day. It's just been really nice. And like, because I love, I love Turnip 28. So I 3D printed a whole bunch of stuff for that before, including, I've never actually, I've not, I have one, can't be bothered, so giving it away, it was given to me. Yeah, fair enough. It is a bit of a faff, to be honest. Um, I think part of the reason I like it so much is that around Christmas time for our Christmas tournament with the, the Blood Bowl League, I get a lot of people being like, can you print me these models and stuff like that. And I like being able to do base plates um, whenever I like, basically. There are times when it goes, I go whole months without printing anything, and then there are times when it's on the go constantly, so. Um, but, like... I've got a massive crab. Look at that. I can paint that whenever I want. I've had it on my desk for for months now and I haven't touched it. But it's nice to know that if I need a giant crab, I can print one. <laughs> oh motherfucker. Well, there's the grey I was after. This isn't this is actually a duplicate bottle. I didn't realize it was there. Oh well. Hey ho, pale sand came to the rescue anyway. Right. What I'm going to do actually in my palette I'm going to oh, what's the doorbell? No idea why. Mothman Sandoval has done a super chat saying, hey Johnny, any tips for a first date? Uh, if you ask me, don't go to an escape room. <laughs> Apart from that, oh, I don't know. When was my last first date? My last first date, it was an absolute disaster. Will have been in... 20... Thirteen. Eleven years ago. So, no, <laughs> I don't really have any, <laughs> I don't really have any, talk about how you think the coalition government's going. I'm sorry, I wish I could be more useful, but I can't.
Addy, are you okay? Says I would advise against the cinema as you don't get a chance to talk. Yes, true. Being able to, like, talking to people is good. Going for a walk is nice. Um, obviously, I don't go... I don't go on dates these days, but oftentimes, like, if I'm hanging out with somebody, especially if I'm hanging out with them for the first time, I'd be like, do you want to walk the dog? I've got a dog, it's nice. And we can go walk. You know, obviously, like, that comes with a, a level of of comfort, you know, where people may not want to go f for a walk in the woods with someone they don't know. Uh, so, you know, judge it right. But somewhere where you... Being able to talk, I think, is very important uh, whenever you're socialising, let alone on a first date. But um, there you go. That's the extent of my wisdom. Don't be sick on yourself. I've never done that on a first date, but I think it's good advice. I'm so, I'm so ill qualified to talk about this kind of stuff anymore. Not that I was ever really qualified to talk about it in the first place. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you very much for the um, for the super chat. And I hope it goes really well. I hope you have a lovely time. I'm not going to insult you by saying something like, just be yourself. But I hope I hope you feel comfortable. Uh, and I hope you just have a really nice time and then you get on really well. Right, there's a bit of metal trim on the barrel there. And some of these metal studs on the actual wheel itself. So what I'm going to do is I'll paint those, and I've got to paint the spear tips on some of these gnomes. Spears. And then uh, I think it's time to shade. I'm going to do the dots on the little mushroom shields after I've done the shade, I think. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, just replying to a message. Right. There we go. <sighs> Might switch to a smaller brush for this, actually. Brush change. So, um, we've been using this Montmartre number two brush, uh, which is relatively new, which is nice. And we're going to switch to this Rosemary and Co. Kalinsky Sable brush, which has seen better days. There we go. Addy says, I have to duck out now as I've got to get started on dinner. See you all soon, Legends. Take care, Addy. I will catch you soon, I'm sure. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope dinner is delicious. Pump wagon, check it and see. I've got another one to paint after thee. I mean, we've been painting for an hour and a half, so we'll go for it. We'll go for a little break once I've done these metals. But um, I'm pleased to have done the base coating on the whole bloody model, to be honest. Um, painting tiny is really satisfying. I know I keep saying it, but it really does. It strikes me every time. It's like, oh, great. A little goes a long way. Oh, God, there's more metal nubbins in there. Actually, also, I was really worried about painting the gnomes inside the sort of tumbler. But they've not been too bad. Generally speaking, this model's not awful for inaccessible areas. Looking meanful meaningfully at the Skaven screaming bell. Aw, oh, Freya says, Beloved and I never dated. I asked him to move in with me as a friend to help with living costs and we've been together eight years now. Well, that's lovely. That's very, very nice. That's very sweet. Oh, 
out. Is that bit meant to be metal? It is now. Rocket. Right. Just going to do the trim on this barrel and then we'll take a five to seven minute break, why not? Oh, take care Andy V and also Table9 Studios. Take care of yourselves. It was very nice to have you in chat. I hope lunch and rest, respectively, uh, are very, well, lunchful and restful. All right. Another thing I like about Warp Miniatures is that they, they put in cuts and dings and scratches like this. So they're already there and you just get to pick them out rather than sort of... I'm, I'm awful for not bothering to weather my vehicles or do any battle damage or anything to like armor panels, etc. So it's a rare treat for me to have that sort of detail oh shit, on the model. It's nice. Bollocks, I've really overpainted that, haven't I? Oh well, I'll fix that later. Do, do, do. Cool. All right, we're getting there. So, you know the drill. It's going to be a five to seven minute break. Um, I'm going to get up and have a stretch. Maybe treat myself to a, a trip to the toilet. Delightful. Might get some... What am I doing on water? Let's see if I need some more water. I might line up a cheeky beer. Who knows? The world's my oyster for those five to seven minutes, and it'll also be your oyster. Everyone can have an oyster. I can't have oysters, I'm allergic to them. But metaphorically speaking, everyone can have an oyster. So what are you going to do in those five to seven? Uh, when was the last time you got up and had a little stretch? Are you too warm? Are you too cold? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Is there anything you need to do in the next five to seven minutes that will enhance your enjoyment of the rest of this stream slash your day? If so, go and bloody do it. Um... And if not, don't worry, there'll be a picture of my dog and some smooth jazz for you to enjoy. I'm really pleased with how this is coming on. I'm glad I stuck so many little little guys on it. It's nice. Uh, CookieCat94 says I'm going to go to bed because it's 4am and I've got a physio appointment at 11. That is entirely fair. Well, however you spend the next five to seven minutes, or indeed the rest of your day, or life, you don't ever have to tune back in if you don't want to. That's okay. Um, I hope, I hope, I hope good thing, nice go time, the, the, that which you're about to experience. I'll be back in five to seven. See you then.
Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to this stream on youtube.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. That is me. I am Johnny Chiodini. Um, how was your break? I got some water. I did indeed line up a beer. I'm not going to open it yet, but I've got one. Um, I checked in with the dog. She was enjoying a snack. Uh, all going well, basically, so we can get back to painting some little tiny goblins on a little teeny tiny car. Oh, Josh Worry had decided to get some malt loaf. It was a good decision. Malt loaf is never a bad decision, if you ask me. Unless, of course, you have allergies. Uh, but yeah, no, I bloody love it. 
Um, it is very, very good. Although I see Emma Benton, you're enjoying a a coffee cake muffin for breakfast. That sounds delightful. Coffee cake's fucking good, isn't it? Mm -mm -mm. So I have a minor confession to make, which is uh, that I've accidentally got into Disney Law Carla. Really wasn't planning to do that, and yet here we are. Uh, I bought a starter deck and a couple of boosters, and it's just really good fun. One of my friends, uh, when I went on holiday at the start of the year, brought a couple of decks with him, and so we we played a few hands, and oh, it's good. It's really nice. The art's nice. It's a nice, accessible game. It hangs together thematically. It's it's just very weird and silly being like, yeah, Pinocchio's going to try and headbutt Gaston from the Beauty and the Beast, etc., etc. So I'm not going to get like massively, massively into it, but I'm enjoying playing it a little bit at the minute. Um, and it's nice. Disney the Gathering, yes, Route Minus One. It's just good fun. It's, it's, it's you know, it's lightweight. Good fun. I like so I like what they're doing with some of the cards, etc., etc. So yeah. Um, obviously my, my first love will always, always, always be Doomtown Reloaded. It's the best card game I've played and possibly my favourite ever tabletop game. I love it so much, but it is quite complicated and not loads of, I just don't know that many people who play it anymore. I used to be on the London tournament scene, not even kidding. Um, but yeah, I'll pick it up again. It's just at the minute, my friends and I are like, oh, come on. Let's let's push a bunch of Disney characters around on the table. Minihaha Sibyl says, It's no marrying Mr. Darcy. I was not aware of a game called Marrying Mr. Darcy. I'm intrigued. Oh, I did see, though, that they're doing a spin-off of Wormspan, uh, Wingspan called Wormspan, or Wormspan. Uh, it's about dragons. Which doesn't excite me at all because I think dragons are fucking boring and I love Wingspan because it's about birds which are like really fucking cool and real. Um, sorry to any dragon enjoyers out there. I realise it's a slightly controversial thing for me to say as a as a, a professional Dungeons and Dragons DM but I just find dragons really fucking pompous and boring. Um, but yeah, it's, but if you're into them and you didn't enjoy Wingspan, you could try Wormspan. Spang, which is great. Hannah Axelson says, hear me out, whale spam. Absolutely not. No, thank you, Hannah. I will not be playing whale spam. Especially since it sounds like canned whale meat. Mephi to go says, depends on the dragon. Yeah. No, I don't like him. Don't like him. So there. Sorry about it. Do, do, do. Doing some of these rope details on the wagon. These would have been easier if I hadn't stuck a bunch of gnomes on it before. But hey ho. They're not the biggest details, so that's fine. Yes, the spelling was intentional. Thank you, Hannah. Amazing. Mel says, living dinosaurs are better than pretend, pretend flying creatures. Agreed. I tell you what, if you ever, if you ever wonder, you ever really want to think about where the, uh, where the dinosaurs went, go look at Egyptian goofs. Specifically, wait until they're making some noise, because they are noisy bastards. But you see them and you're like, yep, yeah, there they are. That's where the dinosaurs went. There's just something about them. The way they sound, the way they move, everything. I'm just like, yeah. You're a, you're a secret dinosaur, mate. And you're really annoyed that I'm near you with my dog. Freya says, I like Terry Pratchett's dragons. Small with explosive IBS. Yes, Terry Pratchett's dragons are the exception to the rule. If you ask me. 
GNU, Terry Pratchett, etc., etc. I think if there's any new board games I've played recently. I think when we went to uh, the cottage, everything we played, I'd already played. We played Twilight Imperium, played a 14.6 player game that took two days, uh, played a lot of Heat, played Nemesis, played some really good stuff actually. Oh, Freya says Cassowary, legit murder birds. Yeah, Cassowaries are terrifying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, screw Egyptian geese, actually. Cassowaries are where the dinosaurs really went. Smith says, had never played Carcassonne before New Year's Eve and loved it. I've still got a really soft spot for, for, for Carcassonne. Some of my friends are like, oh God, we've played it to death. Because it's been, it's been around for yonks, but I still bloody love it. There are more involved games out there. There are more like, you know, new and exciting ones, but it's Carcassonne. Come on. You put the little man down and now he's a farmer. What's not to love? I'll tell you what's not to love. It's when someone grows a bigger farm into your farm. That's what you don't love. That's what, you, that's what I fucking hate, actually. But it's all part of the game. Like, I'm done playing Catan. I don't really ever want to play Catan again. But Carcassonne. I've got time for Carcassonne. Apparently I haven't got time to paint that bit neatly. Sarah Lynch says, I've never progressed to farms, just cities and roads. Mate, farms are where it's at. It's not that hard to get your head around once you've got cities and roads down. It's, a, it's the added layer of complexity that I think, genuinely, I think you'll love. If I'm going to teach you Blood Bowl, you can definitely handle Carcassonne, my good friend. Garbage Day has done a super chat. Garbage Day! Garbage Day has done a super chat saying, always nice to catch a painting stream, but I must head into a meeting and we'll have to catch up on VOD. Size 9. Uh, thank you very much for uh, a lovely super chat, Garbage Day. I hope the meeting is painless. I hope it's productive and swift and that it actually did need to be a meeting rather than just being an email. Best of luck to you and I'll catch you on VOD. Oh, yeah, no, I do wish I hadn't. Ah, no, it's okay. Yeah, I'm getting through it. it. This would be easier if there weren't a gnome in the way, but also the gnome is covering up some of the bits I would otherwise have to paint. So every cloud has a silver lining. Even if I'm not doing this brilliantly. Hey ho. Oof. Davy Jones says, can I ask for a book recommendation? This year's reading challenge calls for a book where someone takes a nap. And I thought, here is the right place. Yeah, I just read a book uh, called My Volcano, which is by John Elizabeth Stintzy, S-T-I-N-T-Z-I. Um, it is really interesting. It, it kind of, it follows a lot of different um, people, a lot of different perspectives, uh, and even kind of jumps between timelines without being like, it's not a time travel book or anything. It's just sometimes... 
there'll be a timeline where something has happened and then you'll it's the same characters in a timeline where it hasn't happened but it's actually that's very easy to follow uh, anyway it's about um a volcano that just appears in the middle of central park in new york and it goes from there it's bloody lovely um i didn't actually read for four or five months last year i was just completely burned out and wasn't able to focus um, and my partner got me two books for Christmas, and I've finished both of them now, and it's lovely to be reading again, but My Volcano was lovely. It does kind of have, like, a weird, dreamlike, surreal quality to it. Um, and it's got some uh, some queer themes in it as well. So uh, I enjoyed it, and characters nap in it. Characters also nap in Dracula by Bram Stoker. What other but I'm trying to look at my list of books. List of books? Bookshelves. That's it. You know when you've got a wood list of, of books? You know, bookshelves. That thing. Um, do they nap in the expanse? Those are good books. Yeah, My Volcano is good book. Read it if you want to. Don't feel bad if you don't want to. Hooray! I bloody love a good nap. I really do. I've done some top-notch napping already this year, actually. Had some really good naps. Which ultimately is what it's really about. Right. That's the sort of detailing done on the wagon. Uh, I'm going to shade these gnomes. Arguably, I should have done that before so they could dry off while I was doing the detailing on the wagon, but I didn't, so. <laughs> Mankoy says, does passing out from high G count as a nap? They do that in the expanse. Yeah. Is it worth reading The Expanse if you've watched the TV shows? Yeah, I reckon. I mean, I've not seen the TV shows. I've only read the books. But uh, yes, I think they're dead good. And there are nine of them. But they all tick over at a decent pace. I've got all of them, Sarah, so I can lend them to you if you want. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, painting. I have a little bit of water. Right. There's the Agrax Earth Shade. There it is. Agrax Earth Shade. Time to shake it like it owes me money. Because the thing about Agrax Earth Shade, this is old formula Agrax Earth Shade. If you don't shake it loads, it can go really shiny, and that's annoying. There you go. Do, do, do. God, it was nice when I had a Vortex mixer, wasn't it? That was good. Did a lot of the work for me. Until it didn't. Up yours, Wobbletron. Now we miss you a lot, Wobbletron. Okay. Right. Here's my absolutely dreadful knackered brush that I love to use for shading. Look at all the look at the patina it's built up over the years. I've had this brush since the day I started painting again. Or started painting, really, in 2017. And it's just covered, covered in... I love it. I'll never get rid of it. Right, so I'm going to splash some of that on the palette. And then get some water in there as well. Because that's what watering something down is. You understand. You're all intelligent people. Right. Gnomes, gnomes, gnomes. Shade the gnomes. I forgot to do the arrow heads on the spears. Or spear heads, I suppose they'd be. That's all right. I'll do them later.
Do, do, do. A bit of the old liquid talent. Ah, I'm having a nice time painting this. I'm excited about this team. It's going to be such a disastrous season for me. I'm very excited. Yep. Good. Right, well, I need to let that dry now, so we should probably paint something else. Shall, shall we paint a little froge? Let's paint a little froge. Let's work on the green frog, shall we? Why not? Ooh, cracky. Crack, crack, crackly? Cracky. Mel says, we have a Wobbletron at work. I personally call it Wobbletron Legacy. <laughs> Very good. Poor old Wobbletron. Root minus one says they look so cool. How could they not win games? Oh dear. Oh no, they're very weak. They are disastrously weak, unfortunately. Right. Rob C says, ah, work finished. Now for a chill hobby stream for the train ride home. Congrats on being done with work, Rob. I uh, hope the uh, ride home is very chilled. Where am I going to put this paint? It's going to live there. Oops. So, uh, what I've done is I've just mixed some of the original green or Cayman green that I painted this froge with with a little bit of warpstone glow, which as you can see is a slightly more vibrant green. Now I'm going to start painting its butt. There you go, look. There it is. Little buttocks. Um, I want to paint, I want to layer this frog up to be extremely vibrant. So this is going to be the first layer of many, I feel. But I may as well start painting its butt butt. That cheek's popping, says Lemony Nose. <laughs> He's damn right it is. Do bo bo. Butt frog, says Fist of Fury. I haven't got a name for it yet. I've already mentioned that the, the massive badgers who I'm fielding as trained trolls are going to be called Mr. Bins and Mrs. Bins. I want to give all of the players, all of the, the, the gnomes, very standard English names like Richard... Just really, like, common, commonplace English first names. Like Richard, Martin, Jonathan. Uh, but I don't know about the frogs. We'll see. <laughs> Root minus one says they never said where she kissed the frog to turn him into a handsome prince. Hmm. True. It's very good point. Something, something, Prince William, something, something, Prince of Pegging. You're welcome, everybody. Pre-watershed moment on a Monday. Here we go, another little coat there. Just going to keep adding coats until the other, until those gnomes are dried, and then I'm going to try and finish that pump wagon on the stream today. Sarah says, I must go. Enjoy more lovely painting time. Take care, Sarah. I will speak to you very soon, no doubt. Love you very much, my pal. Right.
Oh, that's going to be a bit of a jump. Yeah, that's maybe not crank it up that much. Yeah, that'll do. Fine. Cosmic Poet says, I'm sorry, what? I said what I said, Cosmic Poet. Something, something, Prince William. Something, something, Prince of Peggy. This little butt butt, there you go. Continuing to paint. <laughs> now she says the Peglin stream has turned into a comfort watch for me. Oh, that one was high chaos, even for this channel. Whoopsie daisy. Mini Ha Ha Sibyl says, I think this is the first time the stream chat has gone right. Anyway. J Mull says, hey Johnny, any advice for someone who wants to start streaming games? Um, somebody asked earlier about uh, advice for streaming. Um, so there's already a little bit of advice on the VOD for this, uh, if you scroll back. I'm not sure how long ago it was, unfortunately. Uh, but I would say, don't worry too much about uh, streaming the game that's like on trend like if it's not a good fit for you stream something you're comfortable with stream something you can talk about easily like not it's not something you have to know loads about but like a game that you find it easy to talk over or about and that will help a, a big way because if you're playing something that's too taxing and you can't concentrate on what you're saying or if while you're talking you can't concentrate on what you're playing it's quite difficult so starting from a place of comfort will be really good for you. So if, for example, you've played a shitload of episode one pod racing, why not? Um, that would be a good place to start because also enthusiasm is infectious. So if you're like, I love this game because yada, yada, yada. This all sounds very obvious, but um, basically it can cook your brain a little bit trying to play a video game and talk while people are watching on the internet at the same time. I'm not saying it's the hardest job in the world, but it's not. It's not mega easy at points, so the more your comfort, the higher your comfort level with a game, the better, I think, personally, when you're just starting out. Obviously, you can play things that challenge you more, or scare the shit out of you, or whatever, um, and it's a good idea to branch into those things once you're a bit more comfortable with streaming, but basically, make it easy for yourself when you're first starting out would be my recommendation. There we go. Chris Barrett Malloy has done their first ever super sticker on a live stream. And it's always oh, a doozy, let me tell you, because it's the one we colloquially refer to on this channel as the blood pear. So if you imagine a pear, you know, the piece of fruit, big at the bottom, small on the top, green, doesn't tend to have arms and legs and a face. Uh, now imagine this one does have arms and legs and a face uh, and a sports headband and some trainers, which is weird. Um, you imagine that, and now imagine it's got a mug in its hand, and it's absolutely delighted to have said mug in its hand, to the point where it keeps showing it to the screen. Um, that's sort of what we're looking at right now, but what's in the mug? Well, that's kind of tied into why we call it the blood pair, because it's full of a viscous red fluid that has caused some alarm in the past. I'll put it that way. There you go. Tinthal says, finally, I've seen the blood pair. It is more unsettling than I ever dreamed. 
Uh, I forget that there are people who can't, who don't see the stickers when I'm describing them. That's delightful. What's do, do, do. Oh, good, fine. Carrie Joyce says, oh, I ran to answer the house phone and someone summoned the blood pair. Yeah, sorry. The blood pair hath been summoned and described. Right. How are this how are this lot doing? You dry yet? Not quite yet. There's also a cat hair on that gnome. Because of course there is. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Alright, well we can do a bit more and do a bit more bloody painting then, can't we? James Malcolmson says the blood pair looks like the forbidden love child of Grimace from McDonald's and Cthulhu. <laughs> that's a fair shout, actually. Yeah, that's uh, that's certainly evocative. I'll give you that. Right. I'm just going to go in with pure, unadulterated warpstone glow now, which is this sort of quite cartoonish green. Let's see how it works. Starting, as ever, on the little froggy butt. I'm going to start being more selective with where I paint on this thing now. Patrick Phelan has done a super chat saying, Arriving for a stream and having slept, it's an Australia Miss Miracle. <laughs> well, I'm very glad to hear it, Patrick. It's nice to see you in chat. Having slept and everything. Sleep's good, isn't it? I woke up this morning. I set an alarm this morning at like eight uh, because I had a meeting at, at one. So I needed to walk the dog before then. So I wasn't rushing home. Because taking the walking the dog takes about two hours, um, and I was like, "Well, if I set my alarm for eight, I'll probably fall back asleep again. So then I'll get up around this time and I'll walk the dog at ten. Was just awake at eight, so I was like, "All right, fine." So I had like a very leisurely breakfast and some coffee. It was fucking weird. <laughs> Thing about working into the evening a lot of the time is that I tend to start a bit my day a bit later. But uh, no, this is up and about. A delight. This is such an insulting thing to be saying to people who have like, you know, a nine to five. Being like, I was awake at eight this morning. Bully for me. Look at me go. That's not what I mean. Um, but yeah, I was, oh, I was. Oh, I was up with the lark this morning. Shut the fuck up, Johnny. Uh, 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 I'm not thrilled about how this frog is coming together, to be honest with you. It'll, it'll work, I think. It'll be fine. But at the minute, I'm not loving this coat. I'm going to do a few layers of warpstone glow. Anonymous says I was awake at 4.30. So that's, that's why I, as a freelancer, should not be talking about my sleep schedule. I mean, on Saturday, I worked until... 11.30 p.m. and got home at four in the morning. So, uh, you know, there is a there is a flip side to it. But yeah, shut up, Johnny. Dactari says, I have to say this stream is lulling me. I'm not sure I'm not going to go nighty-night. It's 7pm. It's really nice and cosy. If you want to go nicey-night, mate, you go nighty-night. 
Why not? Seven is a perfectly respectable time to go nighty-night, if you ask me. Will is back. He says, hello, friends, I'm back. I didn't design a kitchen because the sh whole showroom felt fucking horrible. Right, well, um, frustrating, I'm sure, but also good instincts to follow to go, actually, no, I'd rather not design a kitchen in this hellhole. <laughs> Because if there's one thing you want your kitchen not to be, it's a hellhole, you know? I hope you find the right opportunity to design a kitchen very soon. But I'm glad you didn't take that one. <sighs> Cheap tacky bullshit with a veneer of false luxury and loads of sales flannel. I feel quite weird now. The whole appointment was like 30 seconds. Honestly, I... I like, glad you clocked it and um, and got out of there. Sounds rubbish. I don't know where I'd begin getting a, a kitchen designed, frankly, so hats off to you. I'm painting a froge. Little froge. But only as long as it takes for this lot to dry out, and they have, so... Thank you very much, Frog, for filling a gap, but it's gnome time again. Tintor has done a super chat saying lunchtime and minus nine degrees Fahrenheit in Minnesota. Holy shit. Back to VOD for me. Lovely catching you all this time, uh, Johnny, and lovely skeleton pals. Take care. Um, stay warm. And, um, yeah, I will catch you on VOD. In fact, if you're watching this on VOD now, hello. How are you doing? Oh, Will says, anyway, can you say everything you said whilst I was awake? And I missed it. Oh, I made a joke about pegging. That's probably about all you missed. That's about it, really. Right. Sorry, I made another joke about pegging. <laughs> uh. Many ha ha Sable says, it wasn't funny, you missed nothing. Wow. Dang. Well, it's good to have a performance review every now and then. Okie dokie. <laughs> Very good, Will. I just made a reference to Prince William, that's all. It wasn't even a joke. I just said something, something, Prince William, something, something, Prince of Pegging. I don't remember why. Felt relevant at the time. But it went down like a lead balloon, so... Anyway. Probably don't want lead up your ass, though, do you? <laughs> it's probably very bad for you. Anyway. Wow. I'm never going to get sponsored at this rate. Oh, God, I need a different brush for this. Right. Hats, hats, hats. Painting hats. Good luck or a quick death is done a super chat. There is no message attached because good luck or a quick death is a stoic sort. Um, but it's very generous. Thank you very much, good luck or a quick death. It's good to see you. I hope... 2024 is treating you very well so far. Mine's going all right. I've done a surprising amount of napping. Uh, painting's going quite nicely. Cautiously optimistic so far. We'll see. We'll see.
Okay. All right. So many little gnomes, all of them with their attendant parts like faces. We've reached the absolute nonsense non sequitur portion of the stream. You're very welcome. We have gone off the rails quite quickly, haven't we? And I'm not saying it's not my fault. We were talking about books ten minutes ago. Now look at this. <sighs> okay. Um... Will says it's good they have their own faces. I agree. I just think it's I just think it's neat when things have their own faces, you know? I just think it's good for them. Healthy. <gasps> Monks in chat. Did I miss anything? Any frogs? This frog. I've done a little bit of basing on this frog, but nothing big. Uh, mostly, Monk, I've been working on this pump wagon. Which is going all right, truth be told. I'm kind of in there. I've just shaded the gnomes. Uh, and I'm going to layer up their clothing. We're not a million miles off this model being done, actually. We have got a whole other pump wagon to do, but I might save that to do off stream. We will see. And then we've got the badges here. They're not done yet. Mr. and Mrs. Bins. This is Mr. Bins. This is Mrs. Bins. Um, all in all, I think it's going to be a fun team. <laughs> Nixie V, I won't read out your comment, uh, just in case uh, that anyone... Uh, I know you are avoiding spoilers. Anyway, I won't read it out just in case people get get touchy about uh, PG3 and I don't want to give anything away myself. But yeah, same. Hard same. Um, I've yet to meet anyone who didn't accidentally that. So, oopsie doops. <gasps> Emma says I didn't. What? Fucking hell, that's impressive. Good on you. Uh, yeah, do keep it spoiler free, please chat. Sarah Burke says, oh, I turned this stream on and immediate, immediately lost possession of the couch as all the animals in the house congregated to watch Johnny. I'll take that. I'll take some, some animal whispering. Sounds great. There are so many fucking gnomes on this thing. Uh, it makes me really happy. What a silly model this is. What a delight. Okay. I kind of feel like we're getting there. Like, there are very few things I need to do. I need to... I'll do that now, actually. You need to do the... The metal on the spearheads. Um... I need to layer up the red a little bit more. I need to edge highlight their cloaks. And I need to do the little white dots on the shields. But then this pump wagon's done. Ba-bear. 
Very exciting. This hasn't been nearly as painful as I feared it might be having stuck all of the models, all of the little gnomes down on this thing before painting it. Uh, I feel like I've got away with it here, really. Um, uh, what a silly treat this is. Cannot wait to reveal the full team to the rest of the Bud Ball League. Like I say, I've written an article for our blog, which we have, um, detailing the lore of the team, why they're from Hopland, etc., etc., who their coach is. Um, but they've not seen the models yet, much less the completed team, so I'm delighted. Um, well... Probably going to fuck my surname up, so apologies in advance. But uh, a super chat from Kelly Lilstrom. Lilstrom. Strom? Fuck! The super chat reads, super chat just to make you pronounce my name. I completely adore that gnome wagon. It's so brilliant. Loved everything else from the set as well. It's pronounced Lilustrom. Oh, it wasn't that far off. All right. <laughs> Thank you for doing a super chat just to make me pronounce your name. That's very, <laughs> that's very good fun. Ugh. <sighs> Not bad. Yes. All right. We got there. Cat M says, well, that was a hell of a time, and I got back in time to watch more Red Caps. Welcome back, Cat. I hope you're all right. Glad you are here. Didn't feel like it took ages, but... Um, right. Oh, that's quite watery, isn't it? That's really quite watery. Good one, Johnny. Don't think I'm doing as good of a job on this red as I did on the original uh, linesman that I've painted for this team, but that's okay. I think this is meant to be a sort of a weight in numbers sort of model, where it's just like, oh, there's a lot of them, you know? That's what I'm telling myself. Ah, painting's just good, isn't it? It's just good. It's just nice fun. <laughs> oh no, what a silly model. I was dreading painting this a little bit, so it's been nice to do it on stream. And I'm just having a very nice time. Thanks for being here, everyone. You are great. Right. Let's just get the Strachan green out, shall we? Mm -mm -mm. Okay. 
Reno, as in Reno, says Mel's. Very strong. Yeah, I'm not sure how I want to name the uh, the pump wagons. Because like I said, I'm going to give all of the the rank and file, sort of the linesmen and stuff, very just English names. Like Richard and Martin. Um, but I don't know. I don't know yet. Renome is right up there, though. That's a good one. Clumsy, I like that one. Oh well. Well, doot, 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 doot. Doot, doot, doot. Fuck. All right. I think a final highlight on the uh, the red caps and then just the dots on the shield and I'm done with this, which feels nice. How was your weekend, Monk, if you're still in chat? How are you doing? I said bye to my taproom boss on Saturday. It was her last shift behind the bar before she moves to China. It was very sad. I'm going to miss her a lot. But the new guy seems cool, so. Sunrise, sunset, etc., etc. Ah, hello, Wizzy McWizzyton. I'm sorry, you only just got the notification. That's weird. Um, hope you're doing well. We're painting this pump wagon. We're nearly done with it, actually. It's a car full of gnomes. It's got four gnome drive. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Um... It's covered in other gnomes. They're helping protect the, the vehicle. Chat is currently throwing around name suggestions of varying quality. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They're all lovely. Right. Now it's time to paint dots on four shields. Very carefully. Nope, need to thin that down. Had a great game with Ed of Hobby Support Group, playing some sword uh, weirdos in his crazy campaign, packing otherwise. Fair. Sword weirdos does look good fun. Oh. Oof, Sarah Burke, that sounds like a really rubbish last weekend and week. I'm sorry to hear it. Um, 
I'm glad you're okay. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that your work did make you go get checked out. It sounds rubbish, but better safe than sorry. Um, bloody hell. Oh, I need to change the music in my ears because there is currently nothing playing. Right. Uh, yes to Poochie Mooch in. Monk, I'd be very happy to Poochie Mooch tomorrow, if you fancy it. Um, mini, 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 mini. It was fucking cold today, so wrap up warm. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. The Indomitable X has just realised the time. I'm off to work. See you all on VOD Squad. Take care, The Indomitable X. I hope the journey to work is uh, swift and free of complications and that work it also passes quickly and is painless. I will see you on VOD. Oh, I forgot about these details. Uh... Oh. Okay. You got this, Johnny. Don't worry. You're fine. There you go. There you go. It's all about paint consistency and brush control, isn't it, buddy? It's no different to any other kind of painting. It's just very small. That's better. There we go. There we fucking go. That's more like it. I'm sure some of you will know this, but you know they're like the white bits on mushrooms like this, or toadstools, as I guess people like to call them. Um, it's actually not a part of the mushroom itself, and they can be brushed off, or they get washed off in the rain. What they are, are residual flecks from the genuinely egg sac that the mushroom bursts through as it grows. It's really weird, um, but... Amanita muscaria, which is kind of the classic red and white toadstool mushroom. Um, yeah, they burst through an egg sac. So all of the white bits are just... Think of it like kind of bits of like eggshell. Which is a bit of fun. But it also means I resent painting these a bit. Because I'm like... Because these are moulded... These are sculpted onto the actual model. So it's like, mm, I should really paint that bit. But also... It doesn't have to be on there at all. Uh, Christoph uh, Prisbilski. Priz Prisbilski. Christoph Prisbilski, I think, maybe. Uh, as on Super Chat saying, would you mind giving a shout out to my best boy, Mel's? It's his birthday today. P.S. Don't worry about mispronouncing my name. Uh, thank you for saying that because it gave me the confidence to have a, have a good go at pronouncing your name. I'm very sorry that I probably did fuck it up. But uh, most importantly, Mel's, didn't realise it was your birthday today. A very happy birthday to you. I hope you're having a bloody lovely time. Um... One year older today, hey, where does the time go? I hope you're having a bloody lovely time and, uh, yeah, that you get everything you wanted. <laughs> James Malcolmson says that the powdered remnants of the rib cage the mushroom burst out of. Fucking hell. Yeah, evocative. I'll, t I'll give you that. Kind of wish I'd done this step earlier on so I could tidy it up more easily with the red, but you know what, it's fine. The last time I did these, I was cursing myself for doing the step when I did it then, so I don't think I'll ever be truly happy with it. It's... 
Chibilski. But generally, don't worry about it, lol. Thanks, Chris. What? Can't wait to see him this year, hopefully. Chibilski. Chibilski. I'm fucking... I'm sorry. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Right. Switch brush again, actually. Science Boy says, why is Johnny painting white specks on elf butts? These are gnome shields, thank you. And they're mushrooms. Elf butts. Would I bother painting this level of detail on an elf model? I don't fucking think so. Fucking two-up badge bastards. <laughs> <laughs> that bit was just for me, I'll be perfectly honest with you. All right. Smaller brush. Yep, there we go. That's instantly better. Smaller brush, better paint consistency, considerably less heartache. That was so much quicker than that one, it's unreal. Slightly untidy, but oh well. Oh, it's going to be lovely. I've got one more shield to do after this, I think. No? No, this is the last one. Fantastic. And then I can uh, relax about it. I'm going to open that beer and I'll start talking in sentences again. One of the weird things about streaming painting is that when I have to do fine details, or just as the stream goes on, I find I'm less able to string a sentence together and paint at the same time. Uh, not that I get in my own head about it, <laughs> but uh, boom, there we go. That'll do on that, I think. That is one of the two pump wagons I will be fielding for the Hockland Red Caps. That's under three hours for that whole thing, which I feel pretty good about, to be honest with you. Nice, painting tiny. It's lovely. Look at my lovely team. It's all coming together. Look at all, look at us. I've done all of this. Not today, but I've, this is, I've done it. Look at that, wee! <laughs> Chris Barrett Malloy says, wagon full of lads. There are a wagon full of lads. Oh, right. I'm gonna open that beer. There we go. Ooh, it's very nearly full. One of the perks of working um, part-time in craft beer slash just knowing people who work in craft beer is underfills because um obviously when people have beer and they want to put it in cans they put it through a canning machine and at the end they weigh the cans because uh, uk law is very strict about it if the if the can is off by even like a milliliter they can't sell it um, it's it's not legal to to sell so then they just end up with all of these cans that are perfectly good beer that are almost full, um, and they can't sell them. 
So um, I was at a thing on Thursday and somebody from a brewery had a bunch of underfill cans. So they brought them and they were like, take them. So yeah, they they are the 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 secret currency, like the hidden currency of people who work in craft beer bars. Sometimes I'll come into the tap room where I work, and there'll just be a box of unlabeled cans, and it's like, hey, it's great fun, because you're like, firstly, you open a beer and you're like, what is it? And you're also like, like, how much is there of it? It's great. I love it. Love it. It's really good. It's good fun. What should I work on? Should I work on the... Should I work on Mr. Bins and Mrs. Bins? I think I might work on Mr. and Mrs. Bins. There are some little bits of work that I need to do with them. So yeah, that's there you go. Now you know about underfills. Eleanor Smith has done a super chat saying, speaking of craft beer and breweries, any plans to take over the Hackney one again this year? Yes. So we're not doing one in January uh, because it's a very, very quiet time for bars in general. But yeah, no, my game nights at Hackney Brewery um, over in London's Walthamstow will be resuming uh, very, very definitively. Yeah, I bloody love doing them. Um... I don't know what, what the next one will be, theme-wise, but we'll see. And we did Jackbox as the last one of the year, which is always nerve-wracking when it's, you know, Jackbox in public, but everyone was very nice and nobody said anything contentious, which was nice. <sighs> right. Let's see. Ah, oh, oh, it would be lovely to see you if you can make one, Eleanor. That'd be lovely. Uh, I will. I will shout about them as and when they get organised. Matthew Johnson says, "Still going. This be, must be one heck of a painting stream." Um, I'm normally still going around this time, aren't I? I don't know. Don't know how much longer I'll go. I'll probably go until like maybe half seven. Maybe eight. I don't know. I'm getting a bit hungry, so I might need to go make dinner. But we'll see. It's just nice to be painting. I need to work out what the next layer is on this skin. Because that's like a combination of, I think, Bugman's Glow and Carne Maron from Vallejo. I don't quite know where to take it from there, but we'll work something out. <laughs> the science boy says don't make that bone look too tan it will look like something else it does look a lot like a penis doesn't it it looks like a cock and balls I'm never going to unsee that uh, yes I will be careful about how I shade this model <laughs> cock and bones very good Murphy to go Good times had by all. Yep, that's that's a dick, isn't it? Yeah, great. Oh, Mrs. Bins. Can't 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 leave you anywhere, can we? Right. What happens if I just? I'm just gonna see what this looks like. Bad. Great. Good to know. All right. Cool. Good. Nathan says, help, I am paralysed by choice of what colour to paint the skin of a big boy. Um, I'm in the same boat right now. I'm not going to lie, because I've got this skin so far, and I wanted to make it lighter and, well, build it up, but I'm a bit in my own head about how best to do that. What are your options, Nathan? And what's the rest of the model like? We try this. This is quite flesh colory though. 
Oh, I don't hate it, actually. Yeah, we'll go with this. <laughs> the science boy says, ugh, the flesh folds. Yeah. It's pretty intense, isn't it? Yeah, skin folds, a lot of them. Nathan says, so far, unpainted. I'm starting to paint Trug for a hand meet, and I think I want something that looks appropriately cave-like. Oh, man. Okay. Cool, though. Have you got Rakarth flesh? I always find that that's just a good thing to slap down on the model while I think about it. A lot of a lot of um, paint jobs I've done that I've been quite pleased with by the end have started out with me going, I don't fucking know, I'm just throwing down some rack ass flesh. Or heavy warm grey if you're going by Vallejo's naming system. I do. I think that is going to be the colour of his belly and such. It's a good belly and such colour. I like it a lot. Yeah, that's making a difference. Lovely stuff. You look lovely, Mrs. Bins. Don't know why I think it's so funny to call a giant badger Mrs. Bins, but there we go. Sarah Burke says, I have to go to work. It's almost 2pm and I still have to contend with snow and the dog sits. Have a great night, everyone. My shift ends at 11.45, so I'll carry this comfort with me uh, through, th that. It's comfort through with me all day. Um, I hope work passes swiftly and without incidents error um lots of love to you good luck with the dog sitter and the cold and the snow and stay safe i will see you around i have no doubt Matthew Johnson says, I'm currently trying to work up the motivation to start painting, but I've only just got home and I've ordered a pizza instead. Fair. I mean, you've got to be in the right frame of mind to paint, right? Sometimes that means having a pizza and not getting started yet. Ah...
Right, Mr. Bins, it's your turn. Come on, let's paint your skin. Good lad. Mm -mm. Okay. Thrown any good rocks recently, Mr. Bins? Mrs. Bins was in earlier. Of course, she's looking lovely as always. You going anywhere nice on holiday this year, Mr. Bins? I'm losing it, aren't I? Talking to a resin badger. Monk says, who shaved the badgers? Were well, they just that smothered in bin juice? I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? There's a lot of skin. For such a striking, like, facial fur pattern. I need to do the redo the back of Mr. Bins. You can see where I tried to daub on some black to, like, give him black tip fur and it didn't work. But I'll get there. Yeah, these are, they're weird sculpts. They're surprisingly unsettling for something so whimsical. Mr. Bins, Mr. Bins. Right, we'll leave that there for now, I reckon. I'll probably do one more layer on that skin. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Hmm. Cat M says, are you going to be dirtying them up so it looks like they've been digging? Oh, I could do, actually. Yeah, get some weathering powders on there. Never used them before. Monk says there has to be a word which means whimsical yet unsettling. I imagine the Germans have come up with one. They're very good at doing that, linguistically. Um, but I don't know. I th mm. I'm going to stop painting the badges right now. Because I'm in a weird place with them and I feel like I need to puzzle them out off stream. So let's go back to the frog. Dilidum. <laughs> James Malcolmson says, need an American 
uh, Badger version of this where the rock is replaced with a broken whiskey bottle and possibly the seven head of a drifter. Fucking hell. <laughs> Accurate. Is it a frog or is it a toad, says the science boy. I've no idea. I keep saying frog. Fro froge. But I'm not sure. Genuinely don't know. It looks quite toad-like, doesn't it? I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you, my pal. All I know is I've painted its butt a lot on this stream. Mm. Fuck you, Warpstone Glow. You are an annoying paint. Can't wait to be done doing layers of you so I can just stick some fucking moot green in there. Emma Benton says, I'm sure it thinks highly of you too. Mate, Warpstone Glow's been saying all sorts of shit about me for years. There's no love lost there. Pfft, Rudy Gerber says it depends on if it paid for its parking, I assume. Come on! Also, hi, nice to see you in chat. Feels like it's been a while. Hope you're well. Happy New Year. Boo! Yeah, we just need to start getting some fucking moot green in there. Let's get cartoonish with this thing. Fuck it. Do shake the paint though, Johnny. Hey, how about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Here we fucking go. Here we go, look. Warpstone Glow is annoying. The consistency is not pleasant. Where's my airbrush thinner? There you are. Boop. Boop. There we go. That's better. Haven't used my airbrush in well over a year, but oh, I use airbrush thinner a lot. Oh, so how's everyone's week looking? How are we doing? Mine's looking relatively chill. I thought I had a lot more to do this week than I actually do. Um, which is useful. Uh, it means I can catch up on some stuff I really need to get cracking with. Like, I'd like to record more than one episode of Preston Kiedini this week so I can get a jump on the series. We will see. This model's going to piss me off right up until it doesn't, isn't it? I know that that's how that works, because something pissing me off or not is a binary state, but, like, this is really going to do my head in, isn't it?
Ooh. Oh no. Cat M says, yay, my new cotton bed sheets have arrived. Fantastic. Discover the microfiber ones I had were giving my dog static shocks. No. Well, at least you realise and you've done something to remedy it. And I hope the new sheets are delightful. I'm confident your dog will enjoy them <laughs> a lot more. Poor pooch. It's one of those things that you just... How do you even prepare for that? It's not a... What? You know, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I guess that's a thing. But how can you anticipate that's going to happen? Bloody hell. Oh, nothing better than new bed sheets, though. Getting in with, like, lovely, crisp, clean sheets. An absolute delight. Daisy Scarborough says, got a kind of chill week ahead except for the French exam tomorrow. It's fine, I'll study for it later. All right. L.A. Daisy Scarborough. L.A. L.A. You've got this. I hope it goes really well. Layering up a frog, layering up a frog. It is quite repetitive, layering up a frog. It's getting there. It's slowly. It's getting more vibrant, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. We'll work out to more and more moot green, and then we'll start sticking some yellow in there, and then suddenly frog. It'll be fine. Good times. Rudy Gerber says the little froggy butt is such a cute detail on that sculpt. Well, here's one in purple as well. A couple of little froggy butts. There you go. I am enjoying this team. And we're really getting there with it. I've got to do another pump wagon, which is a whole big thing. Sure, but it's not that much time. Mr. and Mrs. Bins are coming on pretty well. They don't need too much more work. I just need some quiet to think about it. I've got two fr frogs, frog pals, and then I've got one stilty runner gnome. Nephew to go says, is it a frog or a toad? Don't know. Depends on if it's paid for parking, am I right? Hmm. Oh, Freya says it's not important in the scheme of things, but my brain's got the bit in its teeth. So I'm eight boss fights, 11 spells, and one parasitic infection away from a Dark Souls Platinum. Fucking hell. I've never platinumed a game. Not once. Just never done it. Hell of one to choose, though. Freya, that's impressive. Right. More green. Yeah. Well, this is really quite intense, isn't it? Oh, that's too much. Hmm. Hmm. Are you past your best in terms of painting today, Johnny? I think the answer might be yes. 
Is there anything I can do that is really smooth brain? Requires no real effort and there's no way I can fuck it up. Almost certainly. Almost certainly. Because I'd like to keep going for a bit longer, but I don't want to completely bollocks up the... You know what? Actually... Do, 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 do. Look at the lovely little men! Very excited about this team. They're going to be so bad. They're really catastrophically bad. Can't wait. Um, I think I might actually make a start on the second pump wagon. Fuck it, why not? Start. We'll we'll finish up as we began. Because I've got the um, I've got the method down now. Okay. This gnome in particular is very funny. There's, you can get a model where it's a catapult flinging gnomes with like wings. Uh, and I knew I had to put some one somewhere on my uh, team. So I thought at the back of a wagon would be quite funny. Oh, tits. I didn't do the eyes on the pump wagon gnomes. I wonder if I can just get away with that. Yeah, I can. I'm quite pleased, though, that I've done the eyes on every every gnome I've done. And they're not dreadful. I need to trim my fingernails. Sorry about that. <sighs> yeah, yeah, Matthew Johnson says blocking in base colours is pretty smooth brain. Yeah, this is nice. <gasps> Matthew says I've moved upstairs and picked up a brush until the pizza arrives. Hell yeah, Matthew. Go on, mate. Can you daub that paint? I'm not even going to bother trying to find the faces of the gnomes inside the barrel because I don't know where they are. And they sure as shit aren't visible, so I'm just going to paint these hands. Ah, oh, lovely painting. It's just nice, isn't it? <laughs> lovely. Great. Yes, this is relaxing and nice, and I'm not having to think. It's good. Verulvan is back. Hello. 
Ooh, Rudy Gerber says, I picked up Animal Crossing, but it didn't grab me like Coral Island did. I've not tried Coral Island. Is good? I mean, it sounds like. It sounds like, yes. Tell me of this Coral Island. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of wish I could wipe um, Animal Crossing New Horizons from my brain so I could play it for the first time again. I mean... That said, it it got me through lockdown in 2020. It really did. It was a lifesaver. But um, I'd love to experience it for the first time again because I dip back in every now and then. And I'll play it for a few hours and I'm like, I love this, but there's not loads that's new for me to do here. I'm just playing it because I love it. You know, I go see Blathers. I sell as much shit as possible to the Nook children. They must be terrified of me coming in. Go for it paintings in chat. Hello, go for it painting. How you doing? We're painting... Uh, well, we've already done one. We did... Um, uh, basically a gnome pump wagon from Warp Miniatures, and I had a bloody lovely time doing it. Uh, and then I started noodling around painting a frog. And then I thought, you know what? I'm starting to get a little bit tired. I'd rather do something very smooth brain. And it turns out just going back to base layers is uh, exactly what I needed. So it's um, it's base in time. Well, base layering time, not base in time. Tegan Evans says a huge part of Animal Crossing was everyone playing it together. Not for me, really. I mean, I, I posted stuff to friends, but I didn't run around with friends very much on the island. I only did it like twice. Um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. I play Animal Crossing like I play Stardew Valley. No, that's not true. Um, but yeah, I didn't have multiplayer sessions with friends very much. God, Animal Crossing's good, though. Mr. Tom for the Wind says, Just the other day I was contemplating how empty New Horizons was in terms of content compared to pretty much every previous AC game. It was brilliant, but had very little endgame stuff. The endgame is quite scant, isn't it? Um, I mean, I adore it, and I'll be honest with you, I can't really remember how much Endgame stuff I explored in New Leaf. I mean, it must have been a lot, because I played that game for 400 hours. I mean, I guess if I'm not even thinking of that as the end game, then that's kind of illustrative, isn't it? But yeah, it felt like there was loads to do. I don't know. I'm not mad at it. I like um, I like New Horizons a lot. I like feeding a scallop to the the otter who wants wants one. I like getting a coffee from the roost. Blathers is my favourite. I love him so much. I mean, let's face it, there's still hundreds of hours I could put into Animal Crossing New Horizons because I haven't done paths or done any like terraforming or anything like that the one time i streamed my animal crossing island everyone was like what the fuck is wrong with you until we got to my house which people agreed was nice but um yes i remember i specifically remember everyone being like your island's trash mate because it's just fruit trees and i'm not sorry i still like doing paths and stuff I don't want a manicured island. It's fine if other people do. But that ain't me. Aw, thank you, Emma. Emma said my island's lovely. What the fuck? So you know that I found a duplicate bottle of Ghost Grey, and I couldn't find Ghost Grey. It was here the whole time. It was laying down there, under my face. It's been there the whole time. I had a good look for that. I'm 
Yeah, okay. All right, well. All right, sure. That That's deeply weird. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, sorry, it's changing the music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead. Ebrel five oh six says, "Speaking of which, I should check on my island today." Yeah, do it. Patrick Phelan says Johnny is haunted. Yeah. I'm certainly haunted by the ghosts of all the stupid things I've ever said in my life. But who isn't? Ha ha ha. The Tsar has arrived. Have a lovely evening all. I will catch the rest of this on VOD later, says Matthew Johnson. Take care, Matthew. I hope you have some lovely Tsar. And uh, if you feel like painting, go for it. If not, nice. Take the rest. Lovely having you in chat. I'm sure I will catch you soon. Red caps. Cheerful Spider's done a super chat. Super chat reads, I'm convinced that someone that sometimes objects fall straight through time and land exactly where they were, but in like some hours or days. I know exactly what you mean. It's really sp just weird and slightly spooky sometimes. Things can elude me for ages. Elude me? Yeah. Um, and then just bang, just show up right where I thought they were. It's weird. My headphones love that game, which is very upsetting because I need them a lot. Because again, I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. Need to fill the space with band. Um, and Kenian, 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 twelve, twelve. Fucking hell, that's a big old super chat. Thank you very much. That's extremely generous. Thank you. Um, it says thanks for the stream today, Johnny. Gave me the motivation I needed to finish building my hobby corner and cleaning to get ready for my new roommate. Brackets a cat. Well, that sounds like a joyous experience. Um, nice job on getting the tidying done and uh, cleaning for what I'm sure is going to be a delightful and chaotic new roommate in equal measure. Congrats on the uh, the incoming cat. I hope you'll keep us updated with um, with how said cat is settling in. Um, and thank you again for a really generous super chat. Um, that is very much appreciated. It's very kind. Uh, da -da -da -da. Ooh. Happy Bob says, that's part of why I've listened to Mom Can't Cook so much. I'd rather hear Luke and Andy than my own thoughts. They are lovely people to listen to, aren't they? When I'm hanging out with them, sometimes they just go off on one, and they, you know, you know when people do bits, they'll just be riffing, and I will be in absolute stitches. But also, like, I won't feel like I need to join in. In fact, I feel like if I join in, it will it would cheapen it because I'm having just such a lovely time listening to them just spout nonsense. They're very calming people to be around for all of all of the conversational chaos it entails. Genuinely, very relaxing to be around them. I'm a big fan. Alison Vassabau has done a super chat saying, 
Stopping by quick to say hi before going back to schoolwork. Yay, DNA replication and alcohol oxidation. Bloody hell, that sounds intense. Um, thank you very much for the super chat and for the, the flying hello. I hope you're well, Alison. It's nice to see you in chat. Um, I hope DNA replication and alcohol oxidation both go well. Is that what I should be saying? I hope the the schoolwork on them goes well. I hope the learning goes well. I hope DNA replication and alcohol oxidation continue to work as they always have. Because that means that you're studying the right stuff and I don't want to break anything. <laughs> Good. All right. We got there. We got through it, everyone. Don't worry. That was a brain fart and a half from yours truly, wasn't it? Right. I think I'm going to do one more... Oh, I didn't even do the hats on, on these little lads in the tumbler. I'm going to do one more coat of red on all of these hats and then that'll probably take us to half seven where I reckon I'll stop and uh, I'll go make some dinner or something. Um, just because I think if I if I push on much longer my brain will turn into some sort of soup which is um, suboptimal really. So is my painting right now. I'm getting red paint all over the wagon. Didn't do that several hours ago, did I? That's all right. We can always tidy it up later. I think that's what really intimidated me about starting miniature painting was like being like, oh God, you've got to be so neat. Look how small all the bits are. I didn't realise how much of it is seesawing between steps, being like, I'll do that. Oh, fuck that up. Well, I'll take that back. I'll do that bit. Oh, okay, I'll fuck this different thing up now. Like, just going back and forth between the paints. Because you can always just go back and fix your mistakes. It's very nice. It's surprisingly forgiving for something that, admittedly, is small. I mean, these gnomes are particularly small, but... It is a forgiving medium, I find. Which is good. Because I am fallible. <laughs> oh dear I'm making quite a few mistakes now though I have to I'll be perfectly honest with you but that's not a bad amount of progress I'll be perfectly honest with you clean my brush off I'm going to pop my glasses back on and then I won't end the stream just yet and have a little look at the uh, whoop have a little look at the pump wagon I'm pleased with how that's come out. A good time. Had by me. I'm going to take a picture of it. That's how, that's how pleased I am. It does not photograph well. <laughs> mm, that's a fun angle. All right, good. Oh, okie dokie. Well, that was a fun old stream, everyone. Thank you very, very much um, for being here with me on this little adventure through some weird gnomes. They are by Warp Miniatures. Um, if you want to check out Warp Miniatures online, I'm not affiliated with Warp Miniatures or sponsored by them or anything like that. I just happen to think they're fucking great miniatures. Um, so, um, yeah, do do have a look, because I think you can buy ready-printed ones, or if you have a 3D printer, they're really fun to, to paint, and uh, they come pre-supported, so they run off like a treat. Um, big fan of warp miniatures. Anyway, um, uh, da -da 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 -da, what was I going to say? Uh, I have a Patreon, if you didn't already know. There's a link in chat. There's a link in the description of this video. It's patreon.com forward slash Johnny Chiodini. If you are able and willing to support me directly through that, uh, it's very much appreciated. But uh, also, you know, you don't have to. I get it. Times are tough. Um, so... Oh, Baskeval says, have you ever played Underworlds? Yes, I played a bunch of Shades by her and then I stopped because I couldn't keep up with the meta, but I liked it. Um, anyway, yeah, thank you all so much for being here. It's been lovely. I'll be back on Thursday playing a video game. My, probably, I want to play a Highland song, so I'll probably play that, but it may change, so don't hold me to it. Um, thank you so much for being here. I will catch you soon. Have a lovely rest of your day, however much is left. And uh, yeah, just take care, generally. Bye!